What is it about memes that people just? I just like a good laugh, right? Like, <laughs> I, I I like I, to save things on my phone, and after a really long day, I'm like, let me just go through all these funny memes just to pick me up. Mm-hmm. And have you always? I mean, they've been around for as long as you've probably been like an adult on the internet, right? Kind of. I remember like early middle school. It was like that. Um, I can't even explain what it looked like. It was like this weird face. And it was like, uh, cool story, bro. Or like, do you remember when that was a thing? Mm -mm. Whatever. It was lame. (laughs) Yeah, I guess. To answer your question, yes. All right. Well, this is how we started the podcast, which (laughs) which is fun. Um, Why don't you tell people listening who who you are and what you do? So my name is Mariah Cologne. Um, I make music. I'm a writer. I'm a poet. I'm a creative. Um, I'm a friend. Um, I do a lot, I would say, but to like the public eye, yes, I make music and I like to perform. Mm-hmm. And how long have you been doing that? Um, I've been performing since I was like eight or nine. Oh, wow. Um, but I have, I put out my first single in 2019. Okay. Like right before COVID. So <laughs> how did that turn out? Um, I feel like I was really getting somewhere. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody, yeah. Um, Everyone feels like that. I had just like initially started making music and I got booked for like a lot of shows in a mm-hmm. small amount of time. And it was really, really successful. And I was planning like an EP release, um, which was set to be for March. And I like invested so much. I bought like all this supplies and merch and like all these crazy ideas of things I wanted to do. And then. I think a week before they like shut down all the venues and I was like, Oh my God. It's cool. It's fine. (laughs) Um, I just, you know, it wasn't the right time and you know, I hope eventually it will be, but it is now. Yeah. I mean, mean, it, yes and no. I feel like maybe personally it isn't the right time for me, but why, why do you, why do you feel that way? I don't know. I've been feeling just, and I think this goes for just a lot of people in general, but um, I've just had like a a lot of imposter syndrome and I feel like very stagnant in my career, even though it's not true because there's a lot coming, you know? Um, But in my current moment, because I can't see it, I guess, it just doesn't feel like it exists. So I maybe not in this current moment, but eventually. Why imposter syndrome? I don't know. I've been like really going through something. Like I've I've like reached out to my friends too and just like asked for advice. But I feel like that's normal, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it is kind of like this internal turmoil in which we like doubt ourselves or our abilities or like question who we are. Um, and I've just I really don't know. I just like for so long. I'm like sometimes I will sit down and listen to my music and be like, do I suck? Is this, do I suck? You don't um, suck. Thank you so much for reaffirming that for me. But <laughs> I definitely. <laughs> it sounded so bad. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> no, but. I mean, I mean, no, seriously. Thank you so much. Like, I really appreciate that. And sometimes I need to hear well, that, I you know? I have heard a, a couple singers in my day. <laughs> More than most people, to be honest. And I wouldn't say suck isn't the right word. But there are people who, if you're going to quantify as far as rhythm, and pitch and timbre tone as far as being like maybe more unique to yourself because there are people who have really great rhythm and pitch but their timbre is not quite unique enough to stick out right um you're certainly not in the place where your rhythm and pitch is bad and you have a nice timbre especially for your age actually it's a little bit more mature and grown into for Thank a 24 year old yeah it sounds more like you're like 30 because your voice changes a couple times as yeah. a woman and so you sound like you're in that next register of your voice, but you're not there yet, which is interesting. Um, I have a vocal condition. So that kind of, my voice is always changing depending on how well I take care of myself. So today it's a little bit raspy, but I've also been drinking and smoking recently. Drinking and smoking yeah. things. <laughs> Who's watching this? <laughs> well, first of all, marijuana is not illegal and alcohol is not illegal. Okay. Well, yes. So I like, I do smoke marijuana and. <laughs> I do, I socially drink, I would say, and it's not something that, like, I will consistently do, but when it's around me, it's a little bit harder to resist, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, like, my friends, it's really hard to resist around my friends. Sure. So, with my vocal condition, I'm not allowed to drink alcohol, I'm not allowed to smoke. What's your vocal condition? I have vocal nodules, I have nodes. So, I've had them 
since 2017, which of course I'm sure they've been there before, but 2017 is when it was like apparent to me. So a lot of people will tell me like, I like your raspy voice. And I'm like, I don't have a raspy voice. But it just varies depending on, you know, the circumstances. If you smoke and drink. And mm-hmm. maybe- or just if I'm talking a lot or if I'm singing a lot, like if mm. I'm recording for a week straight, my voice will be very raspy the following week. So you're like the worst person to be a singer. The worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. You should not be a singer. Mm, no, no. But I I think, you know, just take self-discipline and um, just like schedules and things like that. But it's just really hard. Yeah. I'm 24 years old. You're telling me I can't hang out with people who are smoking? That's ridiculous. <laughs> like, what do you mean? I I get it. I mean, I'm... Not the right person. I didn't start smoking. The first time I tried it, I was 24. So, and I didn't really start smoking more regular until like the last couple of years. So I'm like not a good example, but I get it. I, I was I was obviously there with others who were doing that at 24. I get it. I w- I'm a, a dork and I was like, I need to wait till I'm 25 for my frontal cortex to develop before I do okay, drugs. Okay, cool. I like that. And I'm glad because it allowed me to be quite present for a very important parts of my life, like growing all the stuff I'm doing currently, it allowed me to be really on top of it and to never be like late or behind or r- forget something. Marijuana and alcohol is great, but man, you can start forgetting some stuff the more you smoke and drink. Um, I don't know who needs to tell you this, but I already have a bad memory. <laughs> I forget my own songs. Really? Yes, it's ridiculous. I have to record myself on voice message. I honestly, this is just like a lot of information, but I just don't have a good memory in general. So, okay. yeah. So at that point, that's the least of my concerns. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so bad memory. Yeah. To remember singing and lyrics. Yep. <laughs> bad <laughs> throat, bad voice to be a singer. Yep. Mm-hmm. What else? What else is there? Everything. As to why you shouldn't be doing what you're trying to Everything. do. Everything. <laughs> but it's fine. It's fine. You'll be all right. Take care of yourself. You look healthy. I don't know. Like, Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to think that I am. It just takes self-discipline. Yes. Which, unfortunately... I don't really have. Not a lot of twenty-four-year-olds do. Yeah, I mean, they really don't. Even when they think varies. they do, it's kind of funny what they consider self-discipline to, like what I consider now. I, right. Con- what I used to think at twenty-four to thirty-two, a lot happens in those eight years. It varies, you know, from circumstance and like in the case that I do have to record and or I have performances coming up, then it kind of it's easier for me to just give myself a deadline. Hey, from this time period to this time period. You can't do it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. If I, like, just say out loud, oh, yeah, I'm going to stop, you're not going to give me a deadline. There's no way I'm going to stop. So So, say you had a big show coming up, mm -hmm. like Saturday, and today's... Oh, that that You would have stopped already. That would have not happened. Yeah, I have to, like, at least take maybe two weeks or more. That is discipline. I'm sorry to deal with that. Not even... You know what? Two weeks is not even a long time. I've gone, like, maybe an entire year without drinking alcohol. Really? Yeah. At, like, above age? Yeah. Wow. Well, if I'm going to be making music or, like, performing or... It affects yeah. that that much, huh? Yeah. yeah it's, it's literally ridiculous. That Sometimes ridiculous. I cry about it, but what can I, you do? I would, too. I mean, I mean, alcohol is a very polarizing thing. I, I've seen it. I'm sure you have to... What's that beeping sound? Is that your phone? I hope not. I feel like... No I, one's texting me. I hear a beep. Mm, is it really? Check it. I swear no one's texting me. That's not true. <laughs> no... No, yeah, I'm sure people are texting you. Oh, I actually, that's so crazy. My volume is never on. Okay, anyway. It some, wasn't loud, but it was loud texting. enough for me to hear it. Someone was texting you. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you think no one's texting you? Because mm, I just don't reply. Oh, you're one of those. Well, it's the memory thing. Mm, I have okay. ADHD. Diagnosed or self-diagnosed? Diagnosed. All right, good. Because <laughs> so many people, I have anxiety, I have this, I have that. Did a doctor tell you that? No, I saw a YouTube video or an Instagram post, and I'm like, you might have it, but don't go around saying it unless you do. Because some people really do, and it's it can be kind of um, insensitive to those who have been di- diagnosed with certain uh, mental disabilities, emotional disabilities, physical disabilities, what have you. So, yeah. But interesting. When, when did that happen? How old were you? <sighs> um, in college. So my memory. You know, I've always had, like, really bad memory problems. I say always, but, like, I started to notice during COVID. And it got, like, really, really bad. Like, this one time, I was on my way to Walgreens. I went to Walgreens. And I was leaving. 
and I forgot that I went into Walgreens. And I, I looked to the person next to me. I was like, remind me to stop at Walgreens. They're like, we just left Walgreens. Oh my and I was God. like, you know what? I should see a doctor. That's so, terrible. Yeah. So like I scheduled, this is like the funniest story, but I scheduled a doctor's appointment for memory loss, showed up at the wrong day. And then I know they, <laughs> the felt, irony. they felt so bad for me that they were like, we just don't know what to do. Like they took me in the back, sat me down, gave me some water. They're like, are you okay? I'm like, I'm I'll sorry just to come. laugh at you. I'm not. No, it's okay. It is so funny to talk about, but I was like, I'll, I'll just come back. Like, it's fine. Yeah. But I just forgot the day. I came at the wrong time. Ironic. So <laughs> during that time period of like my memory issues, um, there's just like other symptoms in my life where they're like, no, we think you have ADHD. So I seen a psychiatrist. It was confirmed. It's been better now that I've taken my medicine. But mm-hmm. that's You've noticed I mean. a change? Yeah. Good. I noticed a really big change. That's good. I'm glad sometimes you hear not so good responses to medication and what it might do to you, make you feel a little bit out of it or not who you used to be, stuff like that. Um, so, like, can you, being diagnosed with it and taking medication to correct it or at least attempt to correct it, what was it like before and what is it like now? I was a mess. What do you mean? Okay. Uh, no, for, you don't got to tell me. No. I'm for those listening. Not everyone gets to talk to okay. someone who has both and can be open about it, you know? I feel like I really don't have these conversations with people too. So it's like, well, like trying to break it down. I guess I never really thought about it like that. But um, prior to being diagnosed, um, I was really impulsive. Mm. Right. And I'm super crafty. So there's always a DIY going on in my house. Um, And I just felt like I needed to get up and do things all the time. I couldn't explain it to people Um, on my days off. I was like always moving and everyone's like, why can't you just take a break and rest? And like I just couldn't explain it. I was super impulsive, like especially with money. The way that I view money is a little bit different than everyone else does. Like money is always going to come back to you. You know, we don't die with our money. And if I want something immediately in the moment, I'm going to buy it. Why? Because it's mine and it's available and I can. And the more that I'm putting out, the more is going to come back to me. So that's how I like deal with my money. But because I had a mix of like impulsivity and, and, you know, I just, it just wasn't working well for me. Um, So that's one thing. Also the memory that was just really, really hard in college. I just like could not consume information. Like I would have to, um, do my assignments like the morning they were due so that I can stay fresh in my brain when someone asks me information or I have to study before a test an hour before the test just so I can remember it because as soon as I like take that test or do what I need to do it's just gone from my brain there's times where I leave conversations and I'm like what exactly were we talking about because it's just not there yeah so that is another thing my memory has gotten like a lot better um I Once I started taking medication, it was easier for me, like, through performances. Mm -hmm. You know, remembering my own lyrics or playing music live. Like, I'm a musician, but because I don't often play anymore, there's times where I sit down, I'm like, oh, how do I play that again? My own song. And I have to, like, go back and, like, listen to it to kind of, like, match it. Um, So that's another thing. Or let me think. Um, I'm, like, I don't think I'm organized, really. I'm, I'm... You know, I like the mess. Um, And I like that I know where the mess is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, And then since being on medication, I feel like I'm a lot more organized. Good. Okay. So just little things from organization, memory, being aware of the simple things like conversations, Walgreens. Yeah, it was was a little chaotic. (laughs) Today, did you remember today's date and stuff? You were like, did you put in your calendar? Um, I have a planner with me. I started to write in a like a mini Write it down. Yeah, I'm computers in me. No, I don't even know how to use a Google calendar. (laughs) People have been trying to get me to use like some Google calendar. I don't like technology. So I just keep a journal on me and a little small notebook. Why why don't you like it? I just can't wrap my brain around it. Do you think it's you? Like you think it's the ADHD? It could be. I literally, um, I updated my phone after like it forced me to. And I could not find how to turn on my camera for FaceTime. Mm. Do you know how embarrassing that is? I'm like, wait. Can someone help me? Like, I just couldn't do it. Like, I just, I'm just really not for technology. It's not for everyone. I mean, I, I've always been fascinated by it, but I, I have to be well-versed in it with everything I do. I live through my phone, laptop, and the mics, the, the cameras, everything. Um, it's a big part of my life. I teach in the creative technology department. 
at a university, so it's like, yeah, it's huge for my life. So it's funny because I do everything through my phone, notes, poems, calendars, everything, and it's gotten weird now where everything's just in my calendar. Like I just look at my calendar and I like if I see if I can find a dot that's not there on a day, I'm like, oh, I finally have a free day to like not do something. That's insane. It's a little insane, but. I do have a question for you, though, in regards to that. Sure. So I did try to use a calendar on my phone at one point, but when it asks you, like, remind me when, what do you put? Remind me today? Remind me tomorrow? I don't do the reminders. I don't need to. We have. So we have how the, do you remember? We, we have opposite brains, you and I. Okay. <laughs> We're, like, very opposite. I, like, got so overwhelmed, but I'm like, well, I don't know when you should remind me that I just didn't do it. I Well, I'm always looking at my calendar, so I have to, I look at it ten times a day to book stuff. You know, I book mm-hmm. stuff all day today. I, so I'm always looking at it, but I also have a very, very, very good memory. Are you right-handed? I am. Okay. Yeah, I guess we do have different brains. <laughs> Are you left? Yeah. <laughs> well, I, uh, I just have, have always had a very good memory of things, dates, people's names. If you told me your birthday, I would probably never forget it. Um, yeah, I just don't – I it, it's always been a good thing I've had, but it, it hurts me a little bit as far as – Letting go of stuff. Yeah, that when it comes like it to like rough. intimate situations with a woman, it like romance, love, dates, heartache. That stuff sticks forever, so it's kind of painful. Um, music doesn't help that; it reinforces it rather. So it's a really bittersweet thing. If you're gonna do a lot and juggle a lot and be a very organized person who's in charge of a lot of things, which I've realized I am, um, it's really helpful. But if you're going to try to be a normal human being who, like, just hangs out and does things with people, that's not helpful. And it's a big reason why I enjoy marijuana because it's one of the only things that, like, stops it from going. I'll start to, like, you know, get into my head, but it stops the constant planning and thinking so hard and trying to, like, organize everything. So whatever the opposite of what you have, I, I, I definitely have. That's crazy. It's 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 a bit much sometimes and overwhelming, but I try to use it for good. I try to use it for like, well, I guess I'm just gonna take on another thing and like plan another event, <laughs> and like trying to communicate with hundreds of people. Um, yeah, it's I don't know. I I try to find a good way to use it because it is overwhelming and kind of it could be debilitating at times. You know, have. like and on one end, I really do appreciate not being able to remember because if I'm really mad at you. Two days later, like I'm like, <laughs> damn, I don't remember what I was mad about. I don't know. <laughs> Should what I they keep did. this up or no? Like, yeah. So I can definitely understand how you can like, I don't want to say like hold on to things, but sometimes the feeling still lingers, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't go away for me. Yeah. Especially like dates, like dates are weird. They just stick forever in my head. But that's crazy because each year is the same date, so <laughs> you just remember just, all these. They things. just like pile. It's like a. It's like a. <laughs> It's like this horseshoe shape that just piles up forever and each date, like the more dates that happen, the more they reinforce the previous ones and those pile up. And I don't know, it just sticks in your head. It, I can't explain it. it. It's such a thing that even my friends and family will be like, they will look to me to fact check stuff. Like I'm Google, they'll be like, Ben, well, when's that person's, or when was that date? When I did we you do this thing? Life. And I'm like, well, it was March 13th, 2013. They're like, all right. They just stopped questioning why That's I know that. That's crazy. It's not as bad as like those people who can remember like 500 numbers of pi or a whole book. There's people who have like super memories. I'm not quite there. That's on one far end of the spectrum. You might be on this side, you know, one side and they might be over there. I'm, I'm definitely more like closer to that, but not nearly as extreme. That's like, I can't kind of grasp that information because I literally don't even remember what I ate three days ago. Like when people will ask me these questions like, oh, what did you do yesterday? I'm like, what day was yesterday? <laughs> what day was yesterday? T- Tuesday? Yeah. Okay. Today's Wednesday. <laughs> I'm like, is it Wednesday? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I almost said Wednesday, but yeah, it's. Uh, it's okay. Memory though. I mean, is weird. You'll never understand it for me and I'll never understand yours. Yeah. And, but that's not important what's important like what we're doing right now you know we're having a conversation we're talking about things you, you even mentioned I'm, I'm asking or asked a question you never really have been asked before which i think is good i think it's good for you it's good for me i don't know you i don't true but you know, we're friends now it's not <laughs> mariah carey over here you know you got the mc going you got it's close i know wow. i know mc square your parents really 
did a number on that one, huh? My, I don't know what went through my mom's brain, <laughs> but she was just, like, obsessed with Mariah Carey and growing up, like, I was always hearing Mariah Carey in the house, like, mm-hmm. whether she was cleaning or taking a shower, or, like, we just always heard Mariah Carey. And then people would make jokes all the time, like, oh, your mom got lucky, you know? Like, you could sing, and, like, I think yeah. she planned it. Manifest destiny. She, like, ye- like, wheeled it into existence. I believe so, but also just, um, like, musical abilities runs in my family. So it's not really that, uh, you know what I mean? Did your parents play or sing? Um, yeah, so both my parents are musically inclined. Oh, uh, And okay. both... Um, like all four of my siblings are also musically inclined and my grandparents as well and my uncles and aunts. So oh, everyone, everyone in the family okay. can play an instrument, can dance, can sing. There's some sort of music. In Spanish there. music. Um, my grandpa played in the Tejano, Tejano, a Tejano band. Um, so Spanish. Yeah, essentially. Mm-hmm. Um, but my family doesn't speak Spanish. So that mm-hmm. kind of just like. It fell off after yeah, generation. it fell it fell off after him, um, but then my mom, I guess she just dances to everything, so I can't even like categorize that as Spanish. But yeah, so mm-hmm. everyone else just plays and dances and sings. Why did it uh, fall off for your family in Spanish speaking? Because it did for me. My dad is Mexican; he speaks Spanish, but never taught me. So it fell off for me as well. So I'm just curious, as a fellow person who could have probably learned Spanish and didn't, oh, probably like. Uh, there's been so many opportunities for me, and I can tell you right now, I do regret not learning. Oh, yeah. Because um, there's been so many opportunities for me, but I've somehow found, like, a loophole out of it. But for, like, my family specifically, um, you know, like, my grandparents were born here in Texas. So already what was spoken in my house was Spanglish. Mm-hmm. It's never been full Spanish ever. You know, my grandma's like, grab me my shoes from the sala. I'm like, oh, okay, put two and two together. Living room. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it was never full Spanish. Um, and because my parents didn't speak Spanish, my dad's Puerto Rican, and he would speak Spanish, but it's, you know, the dialect is a little bit different than when my Mexican side of the family speaks Spanish. I was just kind of, it just, honestly, I never learned. And I, I was put in Spanish classes at a really young age, like maybe kindergarten or something. Mm-hmm. Um, and we just learned, like, numbers, days of the week, months, things like that. Um, and then my parents stopped taking me, so... <laughs> That's why your memory's bad. You learned it in Spanish, and you stopped taking Spanish, and now you can only remember dates in Spanish. <laughs> Literally. This makes sense. That's funny, though, because I was in Mexico. <laughs> I don't speak Spanish. And my friend was like, oh, I, I can't remember this day of the week. And I just knew it. And mm-hmm. I was like, where did that come from? Yeah. Like, where did that come from? But... I guess that's when I needed it, you know? Yeah. Um, so so yeah. You, you said your dad's Puerto Rican, your mom's Mexican? Yeah. What was that like? Because sometimes those two cultures um, don't always mix in the same way. There's there's different... I say this from a family where I have Puerto Rican and, and Mexican in my family too. So I, I've noticed there was, a, especially back in the day, a little bit of feuding and all misunderstanding. The time. And I, I wonder what yes, you think of that. Yes, all the time, you know... Um, my Mexican side of the family would always just make jokes and be like, she's Puerto Rican, that's why. <laughs> and I'm like, what does that mean? Like, or, you know. What does that mean? And I don't know what it means, but everyone knows. The other day, I was just talking and someone's like, are you Puerto Rican? And I was like, yes, I am. Why do you ask? Is it my hair? They're like, no, it's not. I'm like, my mannerisms? Or like, what are you, yeah, what are you, what is what are you saying? Yeah. But just tell me I'm loud. I get it. Like, that's it. <laughs> That's what my parents they would always tell me. Like tell my, me I'm loud. you know, my Mexican side of the family would be like, she talks really fast. She's really loud. She's always using her hands. Yeah, I, I am Puerto Rican. Some stereotypes, it, you know. Yeah, I'm. That's something that I can admit to in myself. Sure. I don't even see my Puerto Rican side of the family that often to be like, oh, I'm like them. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I, I don't even know that. Mm-hmm. I just know what has been told to me. But also, people that don't know me have accurately guessed all the time that mm-hmm. I'm Puerto Rican. So. Whatever that means, I'm a little bit of both, but I it, I think it's very apparent. I've, no one has ever came up to me and said, are you Mexican? I've never had that. I've definitely had people all the time ask me, are you Puerto Rican? So I don't know if it's just the way that I look or... It's hard to say because I've met... Your, your skin complexion is confusing when it comes to Puerto Rican Mexican because it's a little more fair, um, which happens especially with the Spanish lineage. But like my grandma is... 100% Mexican, but had very fair skin, some blondish hair, 
like she did not look like it at all. Um, but I have cousins and family who are Puerto Rican and they're much darker in skin complexion. So I don't know. I mean, I, I would definitely assume you're Mexican for sure, especially because of where you told me you live. Mm-hmm. It's a dead giveaway. Don't for, tell anyone. I won't. <laughs> <laughs> for anybody who lives in Chicago and area, they hear where you live, you go, Mexican. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that and then a little bit of how you look, but I could see Puerto Rican too. I, I've, I don't know. It's, it's not always easy to tell. But it is, you realize how many, America can be annoying sometimes when people go like, oh, Americans so bad, they think like this about all these countries. Like, I don't know if people know this, but like many countries do this and many cultures and ethnicities do this. It's not just Americans. It's not unique to us. There are other, like what you said, Puerto Ricans and Mexicans have this thing and other and Haitians and Dominicans and Jamaicans and people in Europe, someone who's Polish thinks something of someone who's Russian or someone who's German for so many reasons, history, war, um, conquering, famine, you name it, of just not liking someone because they are different. They're of a different right. club, you know? So it, it it's weird when I hear a lot of people in America go like, oh, you know, this. we need to stop doing that. It's like everyone does it. A lot of countries are racist. A lot of people are, and not just in America. We Everything, definitely have a unique history. I'll, ev- give, you, I'll give us that. It's mm-hmm. not the best, but a lot of countries do it. Everyone does it. It's tribalism at its finest. I think just everything is a social construct. That too. Everything. Like, I <laughs> question everything. And I mean it. Even Qu- Question even some time. things right now. Time? You know, yeah. So, like, a day to us is not the same as a day to, like, an ant or, like, a lizard. No. Or, like, an animal. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not the same. It's no, not the it's same. Not. It, in fact, your day, it's not the same as mine. Well, Movement. that's Movement. Like, Movement well, alone yeah. changes the way time is perceived. Yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me, you know? Have you ever been, like, heart heartbroken? And All the time. To- Are you kidding me? <laughs> right now, in this very moment. All the time. All the time. What? You know, I just really, I love really hard. That's yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I feel you. It's a problem, right? Hopeless romantic, then. It's definitely a hopeless romantic, I think, you know. N- Have you always been like that? Always. Do you think it's going to go away? It's just, it's who you are. It's definitely changed now, because of just like defense mechanisms that I've kind of grown to just utilize in my everyday life. Um, but when I was younger, people would make fun of me all the time and they would say, you're too sensitive. Why are you so sensitive? And then, We are. We are going to be good friends, Mariah. Yeah, I, I love I've to cry. Getting, I get that to this very day. Good, I cried, good. I cried like yesterday. If you want to cry, just let me know. I'll, I'll bring the crying. tissues over. I mean, that's my favorite that's thing to do. That's what I have do. a beer for. It catches the tears. That's pretty sick. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Yeah, it's like one of my favorite things to do is crying. I always tell people that. But I, I yeah. wouldn't say it's my favorite thing to do, but I don't fight it. Like if it happens, I go for it. And a movie, m- music, music, it does it a lot. Like I can cry right now if we started hearing a certain Me song. too. I almost cried on the way here listening to Maggie Rogers. I was mm. really just having a rough day and I just put her on. <laughs> I just wanted to cry. <laughs> so you've been told your whole life, mm-hmm. why are you so sensitive? Why are you being so romantic? You got to protect your heart. Yeah, and now imagine I'm eight years old, and you imagine hearing that for the next eight years, and you still haven't learned your lesson. You're like, why do I keep doing? This? I don't think you'll ever learn your lesson, but that's I fine. I can't help it. You don't need to, <laughs> to be honest. I like I'm a really firm believer, a believer in giving and receiving love unconditionally without any limitations, hmm. because it doesn't matter. Sometimes you know when we give things out, we should not expect it in return. Mm-hmm. Um, it'd be great if it is in return. <laughs> Uh, But if it's not, that's okay because you love wholeheartedly and that's all that matters. So I don't ever regret being heartbroken over someone or feeling some type of way about any situation because feel it and release. That's all you need to do. And that's what I live by. Yes, I'm sensitive. Yes, I like to cry and everyone bothers me. But that's fine. (laughs) I feel it and I release and we start a new day tomorrow. And I also probably won't remember it. And that's exactly (laughs) why I feel and release. A hopeless dementia. Yeah, literally, lady yes. who's young. Like, I got what. Mm-hmm. That's why I, I write in my notebook. I'm, like, I'm not gonna like you, but I won't remember. Like, wait, mm-hmm. you said everyone. Bo- so, have I bothered you yet? No, I don't think so. All right, that's good. Well, um, I wouldn't tell you anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I yeah, exactly. I'm a little sensitive. Yeah. Every you you put me into a group. Everyone bothers you. Okay. Not okay. 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 Not everyone, but there's definitely maybe everyone. You'll have like a small. You know, like, it just takes one thing that someone says. And, like, it'll be so small that you don't even think about it, you know. And then I'll leave here and 
for three weeks, I'm going to be writing in my journal every day. What do they mean by this? Is there any truth that I can find in myself in this? Uh, How could I undo that? You know, like, I love writing in my journal. I also really hold on to, like, specific things. Mm -hmm. And I just go so in-depth with them. Like, I'm always trying to, you know, better understand what people say. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I'll probably remember something. (laughs) That. Why why did he do that? Why did he say that? Mm -hmm. How do I feel about that? Mm Mm-hmm. That's interesting. So you, you write in a journal every day? Every day. Do you think it helps with your memory? You know what? I started writing. Well, that's a lie. But I started writing in my journal in like when I was like seven or eight. So I've had journals since maybe fourth grade and up. And I've gone through a lot of them. I write all the time. Um, but at one point, I started to realize, you know, my memory got really bad. I was like, I need to document how I feel through all of this. Because what if one day I wake up and I don't remember? And there is a possibility in that, you know? Um I don't really know exactly, like, the percentages because I didn't try to go to a neurologist because they didn't take my insurance. So I was like, I'm here for a good time, not a long time, you know? (laughs) So it didn't really matter at that point. I'm like, well, this is the sign. That's okay. Um, (laughs) And I just gave up. But I should probably do that. Maybe not. So I started writing my journal every day. And I don't know. My journal is, like, my best friend. I have this very intimate relationship with my journal. I can tell. Your eyes fluttered. Tremendously, just now when thinking about it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I had this like night the other night with my friends. Um, and at one point in the night, I was literally just holding onto my journal. Mm. And they're like, I'm like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just happy. Like, I love my journal. Like, yeah. If I lose that, that's a, that's a bad day. Okay? <laughs> that's a really you bad day. You finally got loud. That's, that's, a- a, that's a bad day. I can't, yeah. That's really important to me. Be careful. <laughs> I know. My, my journals, um, which I don't write in anymore because they're kind of weird. I look back on them from like like weird. I'm like, man, I think if people read this, they'd think I'm insane. That's the point. No, like it's not just <laughs> writing. It's like weird sketches of like time and math. It's bizarre. Math? I'm out. Don't say that. <laughs> I hate numbers. And like designs and words. It, it goes from the spectrum of like, it's like calligraphy meets shapes and numbers and words and languages. It's all over the place. I'm like, dude, this is... That's the beautiful thing about journaling, though. Mm-hmm. You know, when people say they use their phone for their notes, yeah, notes is great. And I do like to utilize that when I'm out and I can't, you know, physically write something down. It's just not the same feel. It's not the same feel. It's just like reading a book versus reading a Kindle or reading a... Right. You know, it. it it's nice to hold that book and see the print and just detach from the lights and the technology... Um, but a book is its own technology. It's a great one too. But writing, I mean, a pen on paper, it is a really nice thing. My penmanship is so bad that I probably should write more. The argument that I don't write because my penmanship is bad, it's not legible, it's hard to read, is not a good one because if I want to get better, I should just do it more. You know? I don't know about that. I have really bad handwriting. I guarantee you mine is sig- no, substantially worse. I've had everyone tell me that my Let me see yours. Let me Are you see serious? Yes, yeah, I'll tell you. I'll show you mine somewhere. You know what? That's not fair, though. I've been really trying to <laughs> to do some good stuff with this notebook because I like it a lot. But um, that's a cool. Did you get? Where'd you get that? It was gifted to me. Okay, journals, best gift you can give me because I use them all the time. So I was gifted this one two years ago. I just finished my most recent because I told myself I wasn't gonna start a new one unless I finished the old one. So this is my current journal, just so you can see. It's cool. Pretty. Um, and it, it varies. I can already tell you mine's worse. Yeah, because I've been taking my time. That's why it's I've been still, trying to. Um, yours is not even that bad. Let me see this. This actually looks good, but I was I, I was under the influence when I wrote that. Uh, I'm not going to read it. Okay, hold on. No, I'm trying to find a really sloppy one so you can have an idea. This is kind of not the sloppiest, but it's pretty sloppy. That's not. I, I can okay, read okay, everything okay. No, wrote. no, no. I've had, like, my coworkers tell me, like, hey, if you have to write something down, just don't. Like, I'll write it down for you. Because it's just so bad that no one can read it. And, I mean, I'm okay with that. It's it's not as bad as I've seen, and it's certainly not as bad as mine. Mine, you you would be like, I don't even, I can't read this. Bad. That's, I, I want to show you my old one, because to be honest, this is, I've been really trying to work to, okay, this is just a normal day, you know. Well, whatever you're doing, it looks good. Thank you. I've been trying to write slower, yeah. you know, so that I can read it. Because there's times where I'm like, um, what does that mean? Sometimes it's a speed thing. Yeah. Okay. The, the speed thing, for sure. Like, okay, what? I can see that. That one's a what? little more sloppy. What Especially because you're off the lines. 
<laughs> okay, off the Free lines. Freeform on paper where it actually has lines. Some of it's cursive, some of it's not. And I was just writing really fast and scribbling and like, I think sometimes my brain works faster than my hand does. Mm. So I think that's yeah. the ADHD. Um, I don't know. You know, when I was younger, I would, this sounds really funny, but sometimes I write my name and I forget the M. And like, my name starts with an M. So. Ara- Araya? All the time. And I'm like, That's a what? cool name too, though. Just put the M in. <laughs> um, but when I was younger in like third grade, I was answering a question. And the answer was 52. And I said 25. And the teacher in the middle of class was like, are you dyslexic? In the middle of class. And I was like, I don't know what that means. You know, I was so young. Um, that's something I've actually never told anyone. So, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, what, I don't know what it means. You could be. I mean, I, I most certainly am. So that's why I'm like, I have a hard time writing because typing and writing is really bad. Like... An example I always use is if I type out the, it's always like H-E-T or T-E-H. Mm. Like the simplest word of, F-O. Anything will go backwards. So when the words get complicated and long, it's right. a hot mess. I look up at, well, when I used to write papers in school, but now when I just even look at emails, I'll look at him like, what in the world? Like that is <laughs> not at all. What I, all the words are there, they're just jumbled up and mixed and, and texting is hard. Anything I post, I have to read it. 20 times, it could be one sentence. I'm just reading it, rereading it, mm-hmm. rereading it. Because if I don't, there'll be so many errors. And if someone has to message me, hey, man, there's the, and it's like the worst. There's two words that I'll never know how to spell. And I don't care how many times you show me. I don't care how many times my phone has corrected me. Definitely and restaurant. <laughs> don't know how to spell them. <laughs> Restraint. Like, I don't know. Just defiantly. defiantly. No. I <laughs> I know. Just that was great. We yeah. both looked at each other and said you it. You just together. know. You know. We're on the same wavelength here. Okay. <laughs> I hate spelling. Me too. For those, oh, there's some people are so mean with it because they're like, "How do you not know how to spell?" Like you're an adult. It's like I know that I've been trying for 32 years to figure it out. And when you, when you have this problem, I don't know what it is. When you have maybe problems, I'm in that word. When you have this type of mind. It's impossible to explain, just like your memory situation. It, yeah. It's like, I, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm working on it. I read. I the acknowledgement write. is everything. You I know? acknowledge it. I'm aware of it. And I think my friends and family would admit, like, yeah, he's gotten a lot better. Like, now the times I need a correction on a post is like one in, you know, 50. And it used to be every single one. Someone would, would but a friend would text me or message me, like, hey, man, you messed up. One little thing. <laughs> the, the, the two. The, <laughs> And it's the most embarrassing thing, but yeah. you have to learn. I, I I force myself to read, to write, to pay attention to language more just to become better at it. I even have it bad, like with speaking. I, I fumble, I stumble, I, I Talking is words. hard. It's hard, but you get, guess I get better at it. Start a yeah. podcast. It's one of the reasons why I started <laughs> one. I was like, I need to face my speech issue and I'm going to force myself to do it. So this is it. Kind of just jumping into the shark infested water and it's pretty scary but it's like well i'm not doing anything wrong i have nothing to be worried about this is for fun and like what's happening right now there's multiple times you're like i could tell in your eyes like oh i've never talked about this before i've never said it like this there's a lot of things i just don't share with you know i don't know with a lot of people yeah. maybe my like close friends know me really well we, you kind of have to know at this point yeah you know, i'm messy <laughs> i forget things my close friends know but, like, to everyone else, there's things I don't talk about, you yeah. know? Most people don't. They don't until someone sits on the other end of them and just keeps prying relentlessly, just prying <laughs> with no remorse, like what I do. Hence yeah. the name of the podcast. Because th- what better time than to sit here with two people in an intimate setting alone? It's virtually silent in this basement. My voice is in your head and your voice is in my head. We're locked in. I'm not distracted, especially these days between TV shows and podcasts and music and cell phones and technology, distractions are everywhere. So I find these types of moments to be quite remarkable and profound. I've learned so much from talking to people. And education comes in many forms, but I believe that listening is the biggest education. Yeah. You know, that one could have across any age, gender, it doesn't matter. Just listen. You'd be amazed at what you'll learn. And I've learned so much just listening to people. You're Younger, I've talked to people who are 60. I've talked to someone who is 93, and I learned so much about her about life. Biggest thing I learned was people walk, 
walk, walk as much as you can and eat healthy as much as you can. <laughs> and then you can be 93 talking to somebody on a podcast because the, any per, person I talk to that's older, they say that, oh, I just walk, I go for walks. I mean, I go for a lot of walks. I walk five miles every morning. It's Where do you go in your walks? Um, when it's not good weather, I walk around. I have a five-mile path to do around the neighborhood. I know the crosswalk people, the, the people put out the cones for local school. I talk to the teachers. The bus drivers wave at me. I've become, like, well-known talking to everyone on these walks. It's kind of funny, actually. And then when the weather's nicer, like maybe starting tomorrow, now that the heat is... Um, dried up some of the dirt, I go to the local forest preserve and I walk five, oh, cool. a little bit over five miles on that path, which is so beautiful. I try to do it around 7.45, 8 a.m. every day. And it's a great way to start the day. You get to reflect. If I go alone, I go in silence or an educational podcast or music, an album I've been wanting to listen to and you're just out there in the forest by yourself listening to music. It's peaceful. It's good on your feet. It's dirt, you know, and I don't know. You learn a lot. I reflect on everything for the day or what has been bothering me, and I always come back feeling really happy and good. And the weather doesn't stop me from doing it, so it's given me a new perspective and appreciation for weather. Um, Last week when it was like 45 and uh, raining, just walking in that, coming back soaked, or polar vortex, walking in negative 48 last year, and my eye froze shut, my mouth froze shut. But it thaws out when you get back, so it's all good. It's okay. It thaws out. It thaws out. Walking around <laughs> ski goggles and ski clothes when you're not skiing. Um, but it's beautiful. When you go out in those situations, you are the only one out there because everyone else is not as crazy, and they stay in, right? There's no cars. There's no one driving around. You're out into this weird hum of the world. Even the highways are quieter. There's no airplanes flying. So you get to experience Chicago, Chicago and area in a way that nobody does. You're out there in a forest in silence the highways are quiet because no one's driving again no airplanes no one's talking no people no birds no animals no insects nothing it's just like silent and it's so peaceful and you're making faces to an extent to an extent of what you know i take walks every day because my job my job requires me to take walks okay (laughs) and i will like spend maybe three hours a day walking and I'm laughing to myself while you're saying these things because immediately as soon as I you know start walking I'm like all right time to get all my phone calls in gotta call my grandma gotta call my mom Mm -hmm. check in with my dad you know like that's the time that I'm talking to people these three hours I'm trying to make sure that I can communicate and keep up with it and you're like I love the silence for that long I'm like what the thing is, I do a lot of talking in, in those trips. Okay, too. I guess you're right. I have yeah. friends and, and also, roommates that meet with me and we go together. So we talk a lot, but the conversations are great. They're like hour and a half podcasts every morning. We we have the most intense conversations every morning, really important topics that we both, or three of us, four of us care about. I learn so much. It's it's like having a philosophical class every day with people. We just pick at things and talk about current events, things that are going on, a lot of trying to understand capitalism, society, breaking it apart. So there's a lot of that too. But a, a key thing that you said that I think might make you not enjoy them as much as you said something about it having to do with work. Yeah, it's part of my job. Right, it's part of your job. Yeah, like, I get paid to, to go on these walks. So that's a different dynamic, different relationship. This is just fun. This is just for exercise. This is an extracurricular right. thing. So when you do things for fun, like this podcast, this is not for money. This is for fun. That's why I enjoy it. When you do things just for fun, hobbies, which are five-mile hikes and podcasting, they have a completely different feel. You, you, you're not beholden to anything. You have right. no rules. You get to maybe completely free with them. You can still find, like, some type of um, decompressing through all of that, though. You yeah. know what I mean? So, like, yeah, I ha- I'm forced to go on these long walks. <laughs> it is very therapeutic if I'm having a rough morning. But it's or... also good for you. It is it's because exercise. it... <laughs> I don't even care about that. What I care about is sometimes, you know, I get so consumed with everyday life and, like, my internal thoughts and, like, all the things that I need to complete that I lose track of my communication with the people that I love. Mm. And sometimes, you know, if you know me, which is back to the whole text message thing, like, I do let things pile up sometimes because emotionally it is overwhelming, you know. Um, I get emotionally stimulated very fast, so... So say I get like 10 messages all at once. You probably all won't hear back from me for another seven business days. So I can <laughs> digest Seven to that. ten business days. Not joking with you. So I can digest what I've read 
and like kind of like cultivated a good enough response for you because sometimes I just I really can't. So I know that I have to make these phone calls to kind of check in with people in my life to be like, hey, I'm not dead. This is going on. Also, I have this coming up. Otherwise, I won't. And that's what's important to me. So it's still, you know, I can still find great things in working, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. I mean, you you walk with the job. You have, like, the, the kids you watch and stuff. Yeah. Okay. So, but you're walking, um, I'm assuming, around neighborhoods? Yeah. Like, sidewalks? Yeah. I honestly can go anywhere. I just have a specific time limit in which I need to take them on a yeah. walk. Do you wear, like, good walking shoes for that? Sometimes, you know... I always feel like I'm never dressed appropriately. Sounds like it. Like I, your eye thing <laughs> says so much about everything. They do this rapid flutter thing that's like it's like I'm guilty. I'm yeah, goofy. Yeah, that's yeah. what it means. <laughs> the, the other day, I like didn't bring a jacket. I don't know what I was thinking. I was freezing. It was so cold. And then yesterday, I brought a jacket. Didn't need the jacket. You You're know, not I was paying like paying attention degrees. to the weather app. <clears throat> that's crazy. No, I've never. You know, you know I don't use my phone. I you don't just, look at the weather. I just go based off vibes, and that's oh it. My God. <laughs> I know so many people like, and they're always like kicking themselves about. All I, the I time. have roommates, and ac- I've had ex roommates that will just for some reason not look at their weather app. That just tells you kind of like instantaneously. I'm like, like you wake up, is the wind blowing, and look at your phone, <laughs> and just be like, okay, it's sixty three degrees, and then look at your window. It's sunny, sixty three, and it's not windy. If you haven't learned what that feels like as an adult yet, like understand what that should be like, and based on what time of the year, because 63 in July is cold, 63 in December, you're going to be like wearing t- shorts and a t-shirt, you know, put on sunscreen. So if you don't understand that dynamic of those temperatures, weather, rain, sunshine, wind, humidity, and what part of the year it is, like, have you, do you see what that, I'm saying? My problem okay, first. Where, when, yeah, when you say that out loud, <laughs> sure. Yeah. It's, it, it's like, but I live in a, in a basement garden apartment. You know that, like, the temperature is never the same? Yeah, like, yesterday, yeah. it was cold in my apartment. I was like, I'm really cold. Everyone's like, go outside. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's just it's just not the same. That's what the app does. It bypasses I, the garden apartment. I don't apartment. care about the app. <laughs> I don't want to use my phone. Like, I... You do it. You stick your finger out the window, lick it, and you do your thing. Yeah. And just hope. you'll wear um, your fur coat when it's 87 degrees out, and I I just won't. always bring a jacket with me now. That's it. That's it. Always bring a jacket, um, maybe a pair of socks if it's like really cold, and that's it. Like it's whatever. I'm. I I never wear a jacket. I'm always hot. It's the the fur, you know. Do you you know what? Can I touch your hand? Sure. I'm freezing right now. Yeah. Do you feel how warm I am? <laughs> yeah. Like like feel my arm. It's cold. You, you feel how warm I am? No. Yeah. I'm, and we're in a basement. This it's like sixty five it's, degrees it's in here. It's cold. It's cold. Which I love. Uh, yeah. I'm anemic. I'm the I opposite of myself. anemic. So are we you, like the opposites? <laughs> this is crazy. What do you eat for breakfast? Uh, a smoothie. Like what in a smoothie? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like liquid You're doesn't I, count you to know, me. Like, the rest of this podcast, you don't even have to talk. You can uh, just respond with this people flickering People always thing. tell me, people always tell me that like, you know, it's really hard for me to lie if I don't like you. You can just tell. Like there's just, Sometimes I just can't stop myself from the reactions. Like, I can't hold back. You know, you say something ridiculous, I'm going to look at you like, what's wrong with You've you? You've been making faces. Yeah, it's just, time. it's hard. I can't hide it. I can't hide it. It's it's the it's because you're half Puerto Rican, half Mexican, Oh, right? my God. <laughs> I had yeah, to bring a full a little circle. Bit of I had to bring a full circle. I don't actually believe that. But I have a smoothie. You're going to ask what, what's in it? Yeah. Um, I'll preface it with everything. That sounds like a loser. Everything is... Um, like organic and the best version of it. Okay. I take food and health very seriously. So avocado, two bananas, um, a big heaping scoop of just raw peanut butter. Okay, creamy. I like that. Mm-hmm. I uh, love peanut butter and bananas. Then Good combo. The avocado, you throw me off a little bit, but I get it for the texture. It's not the texture. It's the healthy fat. <sighs> Honestly. The healthy fat absorbs all both. the other vitamins and minerals. I just think avocados are overrated. I was never with the trend. They're okay. They have no flavor to them. Well, they get completely masked. They're bo- well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, exactly. Substance, you know, but they're again great at taking in all the vin- uh, vitamins and minerals because the fat, uh, the peanut butter, the <laughs> unsweetened uh, almond milk, uh, raw honey, um, 100% cacao chocolate for the nootropics and healthy fat. 
and uh, pea protein, hemp protein, complete protein. This sounds really good. It's I've been trying to tell people to try this. It's amazing. I've been. I need the recipe actually. I'll send it. to I you. I wouldn't mind that. It's amazing. I've had it ninety nine percent of the mornings of the last like year and a half, and that's it. Nothing else. For more, but I just feel like liquid doesn't fill you up. Like it just, it just you are doesn't work. You're not the work. first. It's not liquid. It's so thick. No. It's 32 ounces, by the way. I, I ate two yogurts this morning and it didn't fill me up. It, it Drink this work. 32 ounce smoothie and we'll have a conversation. I guarantee you can't even finish it. Most people can't. When you get a smoothie at a place, it's usually between 12 and 16, and you're like, okay, it's a lot, right? Especially the 16. This is double, which is a lot, but it works really well. It's really good for your body to break down because it doesn't have to break much down. It's already broken right. down. Um, it's great for digestion, and it's really healthy for you. And it's plant-based. It's almost vegan. Honey, I guess, is not right. vegan, so it's close enough. And that's every morning between 9.30 and 10 every morning. Okay, well, I definitely support that and all the things that you're doing. I think <laughs> breakfast is so important. And everyone that tells me they don't eat in the morning, I'm like, you're crazy. What's wrong with you? Like, you already have no energy, right? And you're just going to start your day off and wait till the middle of the day to eat. Like, immediately after I open my eyes, I'm like, I need food right now. What time do you wake up? Um, Six. Okay. Six. Early. So you eat, you eat really early? Very early. Okay. I wait. I wake up around 6, 6.30, 2. But I wait because I fast. So I wait for those three, four hours to pass. And I want to go, like, I want, I work out and go on a hike on an empty stomach. It feels better. Yeah. Like immediately this morning, I had two Greek yogurts, two, because I just felt like I wasn't full. So I had two of them and then I ate something else. Do you put fruits or anything with them? Sometimes. It, whatever I have in my cabinet. I hate grocery shopping though. So that's all I had. And they were flavored really good. They were mixed berry. So. The Chobani ones. I really do like those. They remind me of tricks, mm -hmm. and they tasted really good. Um, and then I had a muffin, actually. Um, you know, a lot of people have been on me recently about, like, me not eating enough and eat more and blah, blah. So I was like— um, What do you mean? I forget to eat. Oh, you're one of those. I, I have some friends like that. <laughs> I used to be really good with, like, schedules and stuff, but, you know, it's really out of sight, out of mind for me. And the way that my apartment is set up— the kitchen is really just far back. Like, I don't see it. I don't see it. So if I buy... And, you know, a lot of people will understand this. I know because I see it on Twitter all the time. You know, some, someone tweeted, it's like, rest in peace to all the groceries I've lost due to ADHD. I will buy groceries. I don't see it. It all goes bad. Really? Yeah. So, you know, I do, do you, forget. You plan it out for the week or something when you buy it. That's crazy. Is it? That's Come what on. I do. I live my life by how I feel. Vibes only. I told you. <laughs> It, I can't even. So we really should have like a blunt right now. You know, no, those are really harsh on you. And I'm not supposed to be smoking in this current moment. The thing is, you know, it's it's a it's all a commitment as well. And I think I suffer with commitment in terms of like everyday life things. You know, I, I can commit to something and then I wake up and then I'm like, hey, I'm really not feeling that. Maybe another day. And it happens so often that I will tell you, you know, if someone asks to make plans with me. Sounds like a really great idea, and I'm down for it. I don't know if I can commit to a day, but I'm still down. You know? Oh, you're one of those. I'm one of those. I am one of those. So if I said, Mariah, like, there's this really cool show, um, Saturday, May 21st. Why are you rolling your eyes? <laughs> keep going. Keep no, no, going. no. I want to know why you're laughing rolling your eyes at me. Because, okay, there's a situation that just happened exactly like this, but keep going. Okay, so okay. you said... You said May 21st, there's a concert. Yeah, and it's at um, Lincoln Hall at 8. Do you want to come with me? You know what? I really can't commit to that. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to tell you why. Okay, so one of my good, good friends <laughs> approached me to— By the way, this is not a real show. I'm just— Oh, yeah. Hypothetical. Oh, it's okay. We'll find a real one. Okay. <laughs> so one of my good friends approached me two months ago and was like, Hey, I really have this wedding that I need to go to. Can you go with me? I was like, you know— yeah, that sounds great, but two months from now, I can't tell you what I'm going to have. Like, if I have, you know, if I have, like, work priorities, that obviously comes first. That's my money. Yeah. If I have music opportunities and shows, I will unfortunately have to take that because that's my career. Yeah. Um. So I can't commit to anything, but it sounds like a good idea. Yeah. And, <clears throat> by the way, this wedding is this weekend. So I'm going. I'm going. But they kept reaching out to me, you know. Time was getting closer and closer. They're like, hey, um... 
are you going to want to come with me? I'm like, this a month out? This is too far. Ask me in like a week. <laughs> You're the worst. I know. I could not function that way. I am. I plan. I have a, I have plans for five, the next five years. No. Nah. <laughs> I don't do that. You looked nah. disgusted. Like someone nah. just put ketchup on a hot dog. But you, you know what's crazy is I really do like a plan for the day. Like, I need to know, like, when people ask me to hang out, what are we doing? What are you going to wear? Because I need to know that if I'm dressed appropriate. What are you going to wear? Yeah, I need to know if I'm dressed appropriate. Wait, you did it again. Yeah. Well, you know what I mean. I, I, <laughs> Wait, I gotta, what do you mean? I got to, okay. Wait, so what I'll tell you, you didn't ask me what I was wearing. Okay. Well, I I don't know, actually. That's, that's a little bit different. That's the, This circumstance is different. But, like, a really good, I, okay, a good example. Someone asked me to hang out a couple days ago. And I was already dressed, and I thought I looked pretty cute, you know? But we were going to go to an event, and I was like, well, what kind of event is this? Because am I dressed appropriate enough? And then they're like, yeah, you're dressed great. So then I, like, Google the event. I'm like, "Uh uh-uh, I'm not dressed appropriate. Like, why would you have me come out the house like this? So then I just changed again. I actually changed four times before I left. But I just need to— Four times? I need to know. And I I needed to know, like, when are we arriving? How long are we staying? When are we leaving? What's the plans afterwards? Who are we going to be with? Why do you— why are you chicken, uh, chicken, cherry picking? Like, why do you? Picking? Why do I care about certain things? Well, that, but then not like I can't plan two weeks ahead. Because my so my brain can't contain all of that information ahead of time. But what if you just it, put it in a planner or a calendar? I I put everything, but I can't fit all of that. <laughs> so I'll definitely put like you know like example like today I had your name written down and like the time, um, but I didn't put anything else. You know, that would have been great, sure, but it just wasn't what necessary. What else would you have put? I don't know, though. What else would you need? I don't know. I can't remember. I don't know what I... <laughs> like, <laughs> podcast, Ben, address, date. Like, what else is there? I don't know. That's <laughs> what I mean. That's why I ask these questions in the I, same day. I overthink things. I Not at all. Not like that. It, I don't overthink what I'm going to wear. I don't change things. The only thing I do is um, I will shower get really hot you felt my heat i'm hairy so i get sweaty fast today's not a good day and the only thing i take in consideration is like 20 minutes to make sure i can can fit a shower and before i get put on clothes to go do something right i did that before you got here um i didn't i don't want to be like smelly talking to someone for a couple hours but other than that no another planning i don't think about the clothes every I've gotten my shirts and shorts and pants to a place where I like all of them. And I also enjoy mixing and matching patterns a lot because I like colors and patterns. But it's also hilarious to see how much it upsets people. I don't know why. It depends. So I'm fine with it. And I own it. And I think it speaks for itself. Because most... It's your style. Yeah. (laughs) It's your style. and I. You sound like a mom that's just like... But he's a good kid. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's it, just, it's just, <laughs> you know, I'm okay for mixing colors and patterns, but it depends on which, you know what I mean? Um, that's really important to me. Uh, I think anyone who knows me knows, like, I love to accessorize, like, my necklace, me not having it today, I'm like, who am I? Who am I? <laughs> who am I without my necklace? Like, I need these things, but also, like, how I dress, you know, um... You do have really cool fashion sense. Thank you. I like colors. I like secondary colors the most, you know, green, purple, orange. Yeah. And you can mix these things because when people say, like, what are you going to wear today? I'm like, oh, I'm going to wear purple, green, and orange. You're like, what, together? No, you can. You, you can. can do these things. But it depends on which colors you're mixing. Sure. You know? And the, the pants top combo are very specific. Like, you can mac, you can rock any shirt. And, and even, like, a cardigan or something going with it. But then, like, the pants need to be a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Like, when people mix the brown and black, that irritates me. You're not about to wear black shoes in that brown belt. Ch- change that. Fix it up. So, like, brown shoes or brown belt? Yes. Okay. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. certain things people are like, yeah, I'm, I'm going out in this gray shirt, and that's not a good example. Like, I don't even <laughs> know. Like, gray shirt and brown pants. That does not match. What are you doing? Mm. Who's going to tell you? I, I'm, you, the, you I'm the friend. Where no, I'm like, you got to start telling me, Hey, you me, look okay? really great. <laughs> But maybe you should try that in a different color, you know? Are you going to start warning me now when you see it? You're like, hey, what if are you, you Only if you ask. I'll never try to give you any, like, unsolicited advice. But if you did ask me, I'm going to be like, you need to change. Okay, when there's an important circumstance coming up, I'll have to, you know, dress all fancy and go do something. I'll, I'll let you know. You let me know. Mm, lose the belt. 
Change it out. Yeah, honestly, I think I'm really good at that. All right. All right. I'm starting to realize that in like home decor. Like, home, okay. So what about this home decor? <laughs> like interior design. I'm, this is like TMI and it's really funny, but I'm literally obsessed with Facebook Marketplace. Like the furniture in my space is always changing. Like my style is always changing, you know, like during COVID it was mid-century modern and right now it's very art deco, you know, like it, it just changes. So when people need something, they're like, hey, I have this space. I don't know what to do with it. I'm like, I'm going to help you. I go over. Yep, move this, put this up. And you know what? We can go ahead and put this gallery wall over here. Let's do this together. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm good at that. I want to hear your thoughts on my house when we're done with this. Oh, actually, I would love that. Yeah, sure. It's a pretty interesting establishment. It's not as intense as this basement, but as similar as far as a lot going on. I like maximalism, so... That you're in the right spot. Yeah, I literally... <laughs> I go, try to find a wall that isn't covered with something or a spot. It's everywhere. I know, I'm staring at those stickers over there. I do like, you know, I really do like things that are um, kind of like attention grabbing. Mm -hmm. That's how I like my space. My sister, she's so different. Um, every time she comes over, she's like, there's so much to look at that it's giving me anxiety. Mm. She always tells me that because I do have a lot to look at, you know. Um, but that brings me comfort and, you know, like a loud space you do find some type of, like, comfort in that. Well, it depends on why it is loud. Like, what are the things that you've acquired? For me, it's really cool artwork that people have been giving me for 15 years or my family members, um, grandparents who have made it. But it's also, like, all the cool artists that I've worked with or have done things with, they just, like, give me these cool things. And what better spot than to have amazing art from people from all over the world just giving to you and it's all over your house. And you didn't... It's like this beautiful exchange, and when people come in that are actually interested, I tell them about it and try to promote them. They follow my Instagram, this and that. Mm -hmm. It's a great thing, so I have no problem with that. But the future place I live in, I'd like to keep my studio, like chaos like this, controlled chaos, and then the place I live in, just like very minimal, because I've never had minimalist setup ever. And I'm curious to see how I would work with it. You know, I might end up just filling it up with stuff again. No, yeah, that's what I did too. You know, because I've never done it and I've been maxed out my whole life. That's what I tried. You know, that mid-century modern thing for me. I was like, I'm going to make everything look very sleek. Yeah. And not a lot. But then I was like, this is so boring. And like, <laughs> <clears throat> it's just not me. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. very me. And I still tried some pieces in the corner, like my plants everywhere. But it just like felt so empty. And like now my current space is just... I got, like, artwork everywhere, and, like, I love colors. Like, I don't know. You know, it's too much, actually. But anyway, so. Why is it too much? So I was, I was thinking about this the other day. Um, so I don't really know who's listening to this podcast. So um, Could be <clears throat> 10 people. Could be 10,000. So I was, I was doing shrooms. Nice. Right? Um, That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and I was in my space. And I had this moment where I'm like, damn, this is a lot. This is a lot. Like, I have an orange carpet and these purple couches and, like, this, like, this green mushroom in the corner. Like, who let me do this? It was so much. Who let me? I, yeah, you it, let you do this. I know, this. I know. Who and cares? I love those colors because they really do bring me, like, some sort of comfort. And, but in the moment, I literally had to get up and walk out. Yeah. And I don't know why that is. I was just like, man, like, I live in a very loud, colorful space. And I love that. Maybe not for that setting, though. Maybe not for mushrooms. Yeah. I've had a, the same experience in this house and in this basement. I When I've taken them before, I open that door and I come down and I look at this basement and it, it literally feels like it's punching me in the yeah, face. Yeah, very chaotic, I feel like. You I know? can't look at it. Well, there's a, not just the chaos and like, why do I have this, this, and that, but the memories. Like, oh. I think of like a million things that have happened here. Like, profound things in this basement. Just... You know, like a, a band from Tokyo or South Korea or Italy or England or Montreal, the shows here, all the records and all the, you know, 1,500 videos. You're just like, it, it's, it, because you're on mushrooms, they hit you all at once. Yeah. And you're like, oh, my God, this is so overwhelming. So much, so many cool things and so much information has been captured and so much expression has come out in this basement. And it can be overwhelming. And But I think that's a great thing about that type of substance. Um it can bring out things you miss. Like you said, who normal Mariah is just like, yeah, I like that. I like this car. I like the way it looks. And then you take something like psilocybin mushrooms and you're all of a sudden 
questioning things and rewiring how you even look at these colors and these structures, Mm -hmm. which I think is okay. I think it's healthy to push yourself into a different place. And not everyone has to do mushrooms or should, but if you do, I think it's fine and I think that it can be beneficial. And hundred percent. It's I would never say like you have to do it. I would say like if you feel comfortable and you honestly feel safe in your um with your mental state of mind because it can be dangerous for those who aren't, you should try it at least once in life. And if you don't like it, don't do it ever again. If you do, keep doing it. I enjoy doing them once in a blue moon. They are very fun. They don't scare me. Even when at their worst, I love them. I think it's nice to face some really heavy stuff. All the time. I needed a really good cry the other day. Oh, they'll do that for yeah, sure. That's, yeah, yeah. I have this I have this uh, piece of artwork in my bathroom, and it says, uh, um, eat some mushrooms, maybe have a good cry. Yeah. And it's one of my favorite pieces because I just like, um, maybe I don't like express myself emotionally enough like I do in a journal you know but being able to physically communicate with people in my life how I feel is very difficult for me even though I like talking like those are two different things you know and every time that I take mushrooms I'm able to just kind of ground myself and I'm able to communicate with people like I do this thing and it's not the best thing to do but I think my family knows already, like, when I'm reaching out and saying, hey, you know, I love and appreciate all that you do for me, and, you know, you're very important to me, they're like, she's on drugs again. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm serious. You know, I texted my mom the other day, and I was like, you know, you're a good mom, and I'm so proud of you. And she was like, I know that you're on mushrooms. That's the only time that you communicate <laughs> with me. And I was like, <laughs> damn, mom, why do you know me so well? I mean— yeah, it is what it but is. So but so what? You mean it. It's not like you don't mean it. Yeah, I sometimes I need that. I need a good cry and I need, you know, a good sense of just reminding of, you know, what's important in my life. Yeah. That's great. How often have, do you do them? Um, <laughs> <laughs> someone asked me this question. Um, this is another funny story, but whatever. Um, I would say every couple months. Yeah, me, me too. Probably like three, four times yeah, a year. Yeah, that's a good In, a good in different dosage to, dosages too. Like sometimes it's... A gram, sometimes it's three and a half, sometimes it's it's an eighth. Depends. You know, it's it real when I notice something like the season feels good, I'm feeling good. I haven't seen this person in a while that I know also likes them. Maybe I'll ask them to hang out. Wow, this Saturday on the calendar looks free for the first time ever. Maybe that's the day to do it. And I always do it very smart, very prepared because yeah. I don't like what it does with time and how it the sleep problem, so I always will do them at like 11 or noon on like a Saturday with make sure I have nothing to do Saturday or Sunday. All my emails, emails are responded to. Everything's figured out so I can put everything away and just detach. Because when I don't do all of those things, it's a mess. It's a, it, that's when it's You not have to good. definitely prepare yourself. And I, yeah, also, I also feel like I make really big life decisions every single time. So, you know, if I'm really trying to avoid my life and how I feel in my current situation, I probably won't do it. But if I do, I know that there's going to be some, like, outcome out of this. Um, I've, like, done mushrooms and, like, realized, oh, I don't like my romantic partner. Mm. I've done mushrooms and, like, I need to break up with this romantic partner. I feel like they're, you know, like, that's just how my how life works. How many times does this happen? <laughs> Quite a few. I wow. feel like, yeah. Interesting. Okay. You know, I had this, like, really, okay. I've never told anyone this story, but... <laughs> Now, I mean, it doesn't even matter anymore. It's a while ago, but <clears throat> I had this really interesting trip where I was on mushrooms and I was like, wow, I'm so in love with this person. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Um, like, I don't want to be anywhere else but this, you know? Mm-hmm. And then the next morning I woke up and I was like, damn, I haven't felt that in so long. And then I realized I don't think I actually feel that. And isn't that insane? Whoa. That's insane. That's what I mean by like, I really do make life decisions like based on how I feel. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. What do you think that was? Why feel such a profound thing and then? I think internally, like, at the end of the day, we can have love for people, you know? Yeah. And sometimes, like, that's brought out, you know, obviously through psychedelics. And I was like, I definitely love and appreciate you for what you've you've provided for me in my life and our experiences together. But then I also realized that I cannot, like, um, I can't live there in that memory. Yeah. You know? Um, I just seen some post i don't exactly remember what it said but um it's like you can reference the past but you can't reside in the past Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. so 
I can't live in that memory and like hope that things will feel like that because they didn't feel like that the next day. Yeah. But that's, you know, that's life. That's, I mean, that's a very profound thing to realize, especially one moment on mushrooms the next day after. But I mean, it's a good thing. That's, that's a very wise thing to have to know that just because you have a good memory or a good experience with someone doesn't always make it great for longevity. Mm-hmm. You can love, love, as of recently, I've started to realize like how much it can be on a spectrum. Why I'm even started to understand, I'm not too sure how it all works, but it's different for everyone, but like how even an open relationship can function and that whole world, um, which I, I understand more now. It's like, oh, like I've, I've found myself having feelings for different people in two different ways for mm-hmm. many different reasons. And both good and the same things you, you know, similar things you don't like about someone, but the things you do love. And it's very weird. It, the, the classic structure of like, to be very, very typical, man, woman, date, engagement, marriage, kids, house, the whole- The nuclear she, family. The whole Sheboygan, right? I have never fully understood that. It's never really fully understood me. Um, so yeah, to be like, I'm a man alone, like on my own Island, I'm, I'm single and alone at 32. So it's like, clearly it's never really worked for me. So it makes me wonder like, what does, like, I don't know. It's a spectrum. Right. It's things you gotta, you honestly had just have to try things to find out if you like it or not. You don't know what's wrong until you find what's right mm-hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that, I think, there's, like, no real definition to love in general, you know? No. We can't even compare situations or feelings. Like, I can love two different people, but not in the same ways, and I don't think they'll ever compare. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I totally understand what you're saying. Yeah. it It's weird, though. It's, like, when I was younger, I was like, oh, you know, you're going to find your wife, fall in love, and, like, be happy. And it's like, oh, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, that's, like, fake. That's it's like, not going to happen quite like that, or it might not happen at all, but... It's a lot more complicated. I mean, I think having these conversations and being open is pr- a healthier place to be than just like holding it in and feeling them and not sharing them or talking about them or at least he- talking to somebody else and getting their feedback. I'm like, yeah, that's not wrong. You're like, oh, so I'm not crazy for thinking this. Yeah, it mm-hmm. goes back to like um, piggybacking off of where we are saying like, you know, we give love, but we don't always have to expect to receive it back. Yeah. You, you, sh- you, you should Yeah, you just give love because you can give love and you're capable of giving love. Um, but you don't always have to receive that back. And it is nice to feel it back. <laughs> it but it's, certainly it's okay. Is. It's okay if you don't, though. Yeah, it's quite daunting to not feel it back. But it's it's different ways. Like, it's, it's so, it's so, this is going to sound really dark, but to get it in so many ways, except for the one way you actually want it, is like, one of the weirdest topsy turvy guilty feelings ever like the amount of wonderful friends and connections bands artists musicians thousands and thousands of people that have met doing this for so long and all the compliments and the nice things and and the things that has ha, that have grown with the music um seen in chicago because of all this stuff in the fest 10 years and you, I receive really nice messages and emails, and I'm so grateful for them. They make me happy. They make me go, okay, this has been worth it. Like, all the chaos I put myself through to keep this going. But then it's like, but I don't ever get that from, like, a significant other mm-hmm. ever. So you're like, man, that's it's weird to receive all this love yeah. and not that kind of love. That is, like, you know, the one of the realest things that I've ever heard because I feel like I've spent a really long time in my life longing for that feeling of love you know um and that's something you know back to like me feel, being sensitive all the time it's something that I I always reference back to in my journals all the time I'm always talking about like man that feeling of of being in love or receiving love is so special and it doesn't last forever you mm-hmm. know and it doesn't it's like it's kind of addicting because you reach these like high euphoric feelings of something and then it's gone 
And you're always going to want that. You know, that's always something that you long for, especially if you're like a hopeless romantic. <laughs> you always long for that feeling. You're long for that intimacy or closeness with another person. Um, so it doesn't matter like all those superficial comments of like, hey, you look nice or you're great or, you know, you can sing good. At the end of the day, I feel like I really do appreciate intimate moments with another person. Yeah. And even, you know, conversations with people is important to me for that very sole purpose of like, I don't know. It's just anything like at that surface level does nothing. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I mean, women have socially been trained to look at that. My thoughts on it from what I've heard, because I'm not a woman, (laughs) is that that's all you receive. Like I've even found myself changing my language when talking to women, especially if it's more trying to be more romantic. It's I. It's n- good that it's natural that I don't just keep focusing on like how they look or talk about that, but more about what's, it's going to sound corny, but like what's in their head and heart, like who they are That's as a person. That's really important. It's very important, <laughs> but not a lot of guys do that. Yeah. Or they just go like, well, you're really beautiful. It's like, but okay, first of all, if she's like remotely attractive and a lot of women are they already know that and they've been hearing it their whole life I was gonna life. say they've been you hearing don't it have their to whole tell life. me like you're 24 <laughs> I'm sure you've been hearing that stuff since you were in grade school mm. from like the other boys like and it hasn't stopped in some way she performed I'm sure you've been hearing it so what what in the world would it matter if I said like you're like okay again for the millionth time someone right. said I'm cute or beautiful or pretty so and that doesn't make the person any better or worse because they were born with the right genetics and right. have the right amount of money to eat the right amount of healthy food that reflects on their skin care and their body structure. Like, you can't decide. I was just having this conversation today. You can't pick the size of your genitals, to yeah. be honest, or your breasts or your butt or your hip mm-hmm. ratio. Like, you can't do anything about it. People try to. They try to augment them, which I don't know how I feel about that with surgery, but that's all another conversation. I have a really, really strange opinion on augmentation when it comes to surgeries because I had a serious surgery and I go man people just do this for fun to like change who they just are you know we we change our appearance all the time though. I know I it's, know it's more than just the surgery when people dye their hair or they cut their hair or they get piercings or they add tattoos yeah those are all changing our appearance they are they are it's just one is so it's it's almost apples and apples and oranges because one is so extreme it's you're cutting into somebody right it's not the same as like putting on different clothes i mean i know we're we're trying to be more open to it but it, it's just not the same they're, they're very different i'm not opposed to it. i'm not saying don't do right that. honestly i'm saying whatever, whatever you, you want to do for your body yes. i'm here to support it i just like to have the conversation about like what it what it means or how it makes me feel it's like the wearing glasses that you don't need which is for whatever reason a new thing people do that's you know what i'm with you on that people putting fake freckles pisses me <laughs> off <laughs> I have real freckles wait, and wait, I've wait. hated them. Stop doing that. You don't get them. to pick and choose. You're, I'm going to start calling you Mrs. Cherry Picker. <laughs> wait, women can get breast augmentation, but wait, no, not the freckles. <laughs> okay. Okay, you're right. You're right. Okay. <laughs> get the freckles. Go ahead. Uh, One of my good friends actually does like faux freckles all the time. And she looks really cute. But the shit pisses me <laughs> off. Pisses me off. What are you doing? Do whatever you want. I'm just, I'm not going to no do it fake freckles. to myself. <laughs> and I get it if you need to. I mean, I had serious plastic surgery on my head because of a serious brain surgery I had. So between that and then having to wear glasses for the last 29 years and bifocals and messed up eyes and an eye patch for five years, all these issues, I have a very unique perspective like going to the special parts of the hospital. Right, I guess that's a little biased. It is, you it know? is. You live, that's why when I yeah. hear it, I'm like, Ugh, these people have no idea what it's like to have to have these things. Like people are choosing their uh, elective things, all of it. But when you're stuck with it, it's what it's what has helped me to understand and be uh, patient and appreciate people for who they are. Right. Because I've always felt messed up. So I'm like, well, it's truly who you are inside because... You can do whatever you want to your body, but mm-hmm. like your mind and your heart, that's all mm-hmm. you have at the end of the day. And your looks can only do so much. Yeah, you should take care of yourself and be healthy, but like your looks can only do so much. Right. 
Um, unfortunately, we're very visual creatures and looks do a lot for a lot but of people. But it doesn't, it doesn't do everything though, you know? No, if, not everything. If you can't have like an intellectual conversation that's very stimulating to your mind, you're, you can't be my friend. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. And I just, I feel bad for saying that, but like if I come up to you with this crazy theory, I expect the same type of energy back. If you're like, damn, that's crazy. That's it. We're not hanging out <laughs> Like, I need to, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. that's the type of interaction that's Absolutely. important. That's what you want in a partner. Right? And and anyone, not just a partner. Like, I need my friends to be like right. Anybody who's close to you. Yeah, exactly. Like, you, yeah, you get it. Friends, colleagues, mentors, um, family members that you kind of get closer to. And, yeah, the closest people, your best friends and partners. It's It's been, like, the hardest thing is to, like, how to, like, meet and find someone that you can vibe with is just can they... It, the, I don't care how much money they make, what school they went to, who their parents are, what their religion or ethnicity is, but like, can we go at this intellectual stimulating right. thing forever? Because that's all we have. After you have the love period and marriage and all the sex in the world, where are you left when you're like chilling on your porch and you're fifty, where you go on this? 50, like, I want to be able to talk to someone. Right, and but like, that's also talk, like talk. you know the mental capacity of everyone is a little bit different. And that also, you know, through our experiences and uh, just where we are in general, Mm -hmm. I think that varies. So I think it's, like, really important to have people who kind of just want to learn more or be able to comprehend that more so. Sure. Um, Because not everyone cares. No, they don't. You you know what I mean? I do. Not everyone cares. I Yeah. It it was a very interesting time going to college parties. (laughs) When, yeah, when you have this mindset, you're like, I'm not having fun. No, Nobody I, I never to went to college parties. I went to like three and I was like, I'm done. Same with high school. Like, I, that's never. why I did all this. This is, you're in my college experience right now because I, I just didn't get it. It didn't work for me. It doesn't work for everyone. And no. I feel like sometimes people use that. No, actually take that back because that's a space for people to socialize and gain relationships and like you know, everyone's experience is everyone's experience. And for us personally, just didn't work out yeah. that way. And that is okay because we can still get those same effects through other things that we do, like music yeah. or talking. Absolutely. Where, where did you go to college? I went to uh, Concordia Okay. in um, River Forest. Mm-hmm. Did you like boo. it? Boo. No, you didn't. No, I, I, didn't I asked like that as soon as you go, boo. No, it was a religious school. Oh. And, um, you know, I'm at this... Le- part of my life and don't show my grandma this but I'm really questioning religion because it's all a social construct and like one of my breaking points in school was I reached out to a professor and I was like hey I'm really struggling with this and their response to me was I hope God gives you the strength to complete your assignment God. yeah no shit me too I, me. I really God if you're out there help me complete the assignment because that's what I'm trying to do like does he have a beard is he <sighs> the teacher no God oh I don't know because I really don't, I really, it's a social construct and, you know, different uh, religions have many gods, hundreds of gods. So I don't know what God looks like. God's me right now. That's who, I, who God yeah. is. Okay. I don't yeah. know. That, Your necklace is God. Oh. Your tattoos. How what, I wish I had that necklace. That's an arrow? Birds? It is a bow and arrow. I am a Sagittarius. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. We're going to talk about this. I am too. Oh, stop. That's cool. I love a fire sign, you know. I know this much about anything that has to do with astrology signs. So, but Sagittarius, so your birthday is between, what is it, like late November to early January or something? I think it's like November 21st through December. 21st? Um, I don't know when. It's one of the end of Scorpio season ends. So you're a December baby? I am December 2nd. I'm December 14th. That's pretty cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, look at that. Okay. So that that's what that is. Um, yeah, so we are, yeah, about exactly eight years. Interesting. I have always liked December birthday because when you're a kid, it's great. Like the gifts for birthday. Says no one. Take that back. Then the Christmas. No, then the Christmas I mean, Eve. No. You didn't like that? It was um, so much no, gifts at once. I could never have balloons because they deflate. <laughs> I could never have an outside party yeah, with a blow up house. But then you go play at like Leaps and Bounds, Discovery Zone. That doesn't do anything. I like for the me. I like to play inside. I would also have big like snow forts and play with my friends in the backyard. I am anemic. I hate the cold. 
<laughs> I don't like snow, and uh, the sun is not out in the winter. Yeah. And I'm mentally ill. So <laughs> I don't like the winter. Ill like ill? <clears throat> no, nah, no. Nah. Like <laughs> mentally ill, like when the sun started coming out, I was like, life is so great. I'm feeling so amazing. Or did my seasonal depression just go away? Oh, you're a seasonal depression. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes, I am. I hate the dark. You know, it might help. Um, What, vitamins or what? I don't like your condescending <laughs> attitude. What, old man you're not, with all this wisdom? You're not lying, though. I do have vitamins I should be taking. You so. should definitely take vitamins and maybe talk to your doctor about that. But aside from that, getting well, you get up early. So that's good. You get a lot of sunlight. Get out there. It's dark when I get up. That's a lie. No, like from 7 to 4.30, you get sunlight. because you. No, you, now I do, yeah. Some people get up at like 9 or 10 in the winter, which is crazy, and they miss out on three four hours of sunlight, which I don't recommend. The regimen of getting up at the same time every day is great for the winter and getting out there, like taking in the sunlight. You're not getting enough sunlight in the winter. I Obviously, seasonal depression is a complicated thing, and I'm not saying this is no, going to change the that or fix it. No, the serotonin is a really big thing. Right. I'm just saying it can Very. help. It can make it not as bad. That's all. Right. I'm no, not saying it's right. going to go away. Just it could help. It helped me tremendously to where I feel the same all year round. Like every, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It could be rainy. It, could be, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that can't ever be good. Why? I don't know. I mean, it's not like perfect. It's not like I feel exactly, but I, I don't get the weather and the part of the year doesn't make me feel so bad as it used to. Now Listen, it's more uniform. I, <clears throat> I obviously still feel no, better in the summer because the sunshine's nice. Sure. I'm. I'm. I don't know why I cannot talk right now. <clears throat> I'm here for the sadness and the you know <clears throat> the episodes because it's good for my art. You know. I used to think that way. It is. No, I. I mean, I literally at your age, I was doing the same thing to write really <clears throat> heavy. It's not even to write. I feel like it's to feel all of it. Mariah, <laughs> listen, you're telling me something that I've experienced. I'm here for it. You you honestly remind me so much of my brother. And if he listens to this and be like, it's like I'm talking to my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I've 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 been in that position. The that exact age of like I just want to feel, I want to be, I want to be this, I want to do that. I need it for poetry, I need it for music, I need it to feel, to have emotions, to in everything I do, expression with which is the lubrication of everything we call life, right? But then I go, well, that type of thinking all the time, there's not longevity in it because no, I might shoot myself, hang myself, jump off a building. Impulsivity. Take so many pills. Um, eventually, that starts to wear down your soul when you're always just like, I want to live in this dark, thick, emotional, just on the precipice of like dying, but like not. And it's it's a beautiful thing until it's not. And throughout my 20s, I started to like not do that as much because as nice it is as it is to feel really sad and write a great record, you can't live like that forever. It starts to really hurt. It starts to affect your life. It starts to make people not want to be around you. You need there, you know there's balance in everything. There's balance in everything. I still feel that. I still no. write the poems. I still will cry on that couch and my friends will look at me sideways. But I don't look at it the same way. I don't let it control it the same way. I don't even embrace it in the same way. I'm I'm aware of like it's gonna happen and come in waves. I, you know, going the waves, yeah, yeah, yeah. Going through That's a really breakups, good way of describing it, is the first month you you want to die. It's like the worst feeling. You're just like, this is miserable. I, I miss my friend, you know. But over time, you you go like, I realize you miss your best friend, but you can find love in different ways with new people, and it's scary and it's overwhelming, it's exhausting, but it can be done. And so the older I get, and there's so much more to learn. I can't wait to be 40, 50, 60, to take in all this knowledge that is life, I've realized I enjoy the low lulls of sadness, but I enjoy it while it's, you know, 7.30 and I'm in the forest walking. Right. You know, like I, I, I take it in still, but I try to do everything I can to like embrace it and look at it in a different way. It's just a different lens now. It's still there. The heaviness is still there. The emotions are still weighing on me. But instead of you know, hanging out with people and going hiding away, it's, I'll talk to them and hear what, how they're feeling and try to like look at it in a different way. Take in new information. 
um, because I don't know everything. And how I feel is how I feel now, and I don't know how I'm going to feel in six months, but I do know. What? Oh, I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> I do know that I don't like the wallowing and pity and, and sadness and, like, true depression. Like, so bad where you're like, I'll let all my hair grow out and my beard grow out and I won't care how I eat or what time I wake up. And you just fall apart in every way. I don't think anyone truly likes depression. You know no, what I mean? No. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't kind of fight feelings, though. And mm. for the sole purpose of, um, you know, like, with every low is a very high high. And, you know, I have a yin-yang tattoo on me. I, I think the duality of everything in life is necessary. I'm not going to be happy forever. You know, I'm in a really happy part of my life right now. And I, I had to sit down and think about it. When's the last time I felt like this? When is it going away? Mm. You know? And that's okay. Because it goes back to, like, I have to feel these lows to feel those highs. And that's okay. I'm not going to fight that because I need to feel and release it. But it's also good to acknowledge, hey, this lifestyle that I'm living isn't healthy for me and it doesn't benefit me. But it's still important and necessary to feel. Yeah. What what right now is going on that that makes think, me happy? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I just like my space that I'm in, the friends that are around me, and the community that supports me has been just amazing and kind to me. Um, I like my current job a lot, a lot, and it, everything just feels kind of how I wanted it for a really long time. And it's you know we ask for these things, and then they're finally given to us. What do we do with that? Who gives us these things? And who hears what we're requesting, you know? And I think in, like, my current moment where I am right now, and it, it's it's a duality in, in this because I was just telling you earlier how I feel as an artist. It feels like I don't do enough. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm more than just an artistic person or a creative. When I'm me, I feel very content with who I am and what's around me. It's, it's it's a duality, and I have mm -hmm. to learn to appreciate both. I may not feel the best in one part of my life, but I, I feel the best in another part of my life. And I'm learning to take both of those in. Hopefully, if I can kind of mash them up and incorporate both of that, you know, and find in a middle ground. But if not, it's okay. I'm appreciating things for what they are. That sounds wonderful. That sounds very positive. Yeah. Um, good for you. Thank you. Yeah. I'm happy for you. Thank you for having me here. I'm like, you know, I'm also taking in this moment and being able to talk to you has been really cool, hear different perspectives because mm. we're like kind of one and the same, but we're not. <laughs> we're not. We're completely different. But it's it's important that I can hear your perspective and kind of get a, you know, an understanding of someone else. Yeah. You're you're quite wise for a 24-year-old. I hear that a lot, you actually. Are. I, I have met quite a few people and I do often and I have a lot of students that aren't too far from your age. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's interesting. It's, I, it's always interesting to hear someone who I feel is more mature, more on, has, has experienced a lot and does something good with those experiences instead of not taking away, extrapolating some knowledge from it at different ages and different beliefs, different backgrounds, different locations. Um, but it helps me realize like, I'm not the only person. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of similar similar people out there. We do have some similarities. Mm -hmm. Our birthdays are close. Oh, wait. Speaking of which, mm -hmm. the sign thing. So, I'm assuming you're into astrology, hence the, ta the tattoo. Okay. Yeah. Right? Yeah, a little, a little bit, bit. A little bit. Enough to get a tattoo. <laughs> yeah. More than bit. me. I don't have any tattoos right. at all. Um, what is it about it that interests you? Or what do you, what, 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 it, what does it do for you? Do you, or what do you, what parts of it are you fascinated with? Um, you know, when I was really, really young, I w my friends, like, we make jokes about this and stuff, but when I was really, really young, I was really into just, like, celestial things. So I had this charm bracelet only filled up with, like, moon, stars, sun, um, and I used to have telescopes growing up, and I really was fascinated with the idea of something other than Earth. That's where it stemmed from, you know? Now that I'm at this age where I realize that astrology is here to benefit us and looking at a birth chart can help you kind of make better decisions for yourself or understand people better you know um i've i've learned to communicate differently with different people based on who they are 
because of their zodiac sign. I know that sounds crazy, um, but here's a good example. My best friend is a Gemini. Um, he's really blunt. He doesn't he doesn't hold back. He likes things just cutthroat. He doesn't want you to sugarcoat anything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've learned to communicate with them in that way. You know, you want the truth, I'm gonna give you the truth. My sister is a Pisces, and she's really emotional, and she has a hard time handling her emotions. So sorry if you're hearing this. I love her so much, but it's different the way that I approach her than I approach my best friend. But that's because that's the way that, you know, um, each zodiac sign is a little bit different. We have these characteristics, but also I'm better understanding the people in my life and how can I go about this in a better way. Mm -hmm. So when I talk to my sister, I kind of have to sugarcoat things. I kind of have to go a little bit lightly take things a little bit slower and that has benefited me in my life and my relationships with other people there's a lot more you know to zodiac signs than meet meets the eye Mm -hmm. when you're looking at birth charts you're just better understanding like the upbringing of people and how to go about situations and what is the best timing for certain things and I that's why I I really like resonate with just who I am you know I just keep going which is why I resonate with the arrow so much. I can't stop. I can't ever be stagnant in my life. Mm-hmm. And, and I'm constantly changing and I'm constantly going through these like ego deaths and taking myself down and then being reborn again. Like that's, I'm constantly doing that. And I feel like a heavy part of that is, you know, it resonates with me being a Sagittarius. I just keep going like the arrow (laughs) and yeah that's that's i think why i'm a little bit interested in it and i think i resonate really heavily with like the traits of a sagittarius so yeah now what have have you ever come across someone that doesn't fit those see there's a little bit more to that right because you have multiple signs in a birth chart um so like you know just i don't i don't really know you but based off this conversation you're Sagittarius like me and we may share characteristics and like maybe you're an extrovert and you like to talk to people and you like to be social um but your emotional side's probably a little bit different than me and so you have you know multiple signs that represent different things you have like a sign that represents like um how you communicate with people emotionally like example like your moon sign and if you like look into your circle which I've found super interesting. My moon sign is an earth sign. I am a Capricorn moon. Um, I overwork myself. I don't like to talk about my emotions. I love people. I love talking. Don't ask me how I feel. I don't want to tell you that. How do you feel? I'm not telling you. (laughs) So because of that, you know, all my closest friends, we all have um, earth moon signs. We all understand each other emotionally. And that's, you know, that's a little bit more than your sun sign. You're... But that is a little bit, you know, that that varies too because my Gemini best friend, my soulmate, absolutely love them. And in astrology, Sagittarius and Geminis are the ultimate ultimate soulmates, you know. What what month or or region or region of of the year is Gemini? It's like end of May, early June. Hmm. Love Geminis. You know what? You're a Sagittarius. Look for some Geminis in your life. They really spice things up. They're the chaos that I live for. I, I have, live vicariously but I have, through that. I have that in friends from every part of the year. Well, you that's know? good. That's good then. Right? You know, I, I don't know. I never thought, uh, because I know nothing about it, I've never associated any of it with a person. But, right. You, you know, know what? <laughs> Once I started to, I never like meet friends and be like, so, <laughs> so what's your moon sign? Yeah, like yeah. never. No, no. I made all these great friends and then I looked into this and realized, oh, you know, there's a lot of things that are very similar. Most of them have Virgo moons, just, you know, an earth moon. And they all understand me emotionally. I know that I can communicate with them. I know that they know how to communicate with me. Mm. And we, you know, we think the same. And that's why it's easier to use. I think this is all personal opinion. You sure. know, like, yeah. I don't like literally religiously study this. <laughs> yeah. This is just things that I've found in my experience, how it's helped me mm-hmm. and benefit my life. Um, you get something out of it. Yeah, way. I do. Yeah. I do. It, it's helped me be a better friend to other people because there's been times where I just, you know, people are like, you're so blunt. You hurt my feelings. Oh, like you say mean things. And <laughs> my best friend would be like, yes, you're a perfect friend because you told me exactly what I wanted to hear. And then I talk to my sister and you're like, you're so mean. That's why I don't tell you things. Like, you can't, you know, how? How can you meet everyone's needs? You can't. You can't. But if I know how to approach you in a better way, 
you know, I can tell my best friend, that orange doesn't look good on you. <laughs> and my sister, maybe we should try a lighter color, maybe pink. You know, there's, mm-hmm. a, there's different ways to go about these things. And now that I understand that, life has been so much better. Mm. I, I hope that answers a little bit. It helps. Yeah. I'm curious because... All right, I'm going to say something that's very... I'm generalizing a lot, but okay. bear with me. I don't mean anything, but I've only ever heard here... I've only ever heard women talk about it. You know, someone made a joke to me the other day. They're like, this is before they... have Now they are completely into astrology, bought books about it and everything. <laughs> um, the original conversation they have is like, oh, you're one of those Twitter astrology girls. Twitter. And I, I'm like, what does that, that mean? I don't know what that Tell means. me what that means. <laughs> Because, you know, there's, like, and I have met people who don't know anything about astrology. And, like, I met another Sagittarius. And and they were, like, oh, yeah, I'm this way because I'm a Sagittarius. I'm, like, no, you're that way because you need to see a therapist. <laughs> not because you're a, a Sagittarius. Like, that. do not do that to us. Like, that's to nothing us. to do with what your sign is. Like, there's a lot more. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That Yeah, that's a whole other topic. So, what were you saying? I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I, I've i only ever heard, and this is my own experience, talking to women, I've only have ever heard women bring it up. Like, ever. I, I've never heard a guy bring it up ever. None of my guy friends, no man I've ever walked into, I don't, do you know what that means? What that, where do you think that comes from? Um, Any thoughts? I like to hear your thoughts. Being, I don't mean to be mean, but they're just not knowledgeable. Like, all of the, all of the male figures in my life have, are knowledgeable of astrology. Mm. That may just be like who you're surrounding yourself with or to the extent of... I mean, I don't know. know. I've met quite a few men around the planet. I've never heard anybody talk about it. Then they're all goofy. <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. All it, of it my guy friends... It could be an age thing too. It could be no, an age that's thing. That's not even true, I no? don't think. No, one of my good friends, um, they're like, I don't know how old they are, like mid-30s. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very into astrology. It's a science, you know that, right? It's been around for a long time. I think... You know, the knowledge is out there. It's whether or not someone wants to learn. Mm-hmm. That's just what it is. And if you don't want to, you don't have to. No one's going to force it on you. And it's, mm-hmm. it honestly, you could go your entire life without even knowing. But okay. it's beneficial if you do, you know? I, I will look into it. I know nothing about it. I don't know. I've, I've talked to a lot of guys. I've never heard a guy bring it up. Like, I don't know. So I don't know. I was just curious. I've only ever heard women bring it up. But obviously, I'm just generalizing. It's my experience. I'm sure guys bring it up. I just don't hear it, and I was just curious. When I hear a woman bring it up, I always ask, like, oh, what do you think about this? Like, this is what I've experienced. And I've gotten different answers. Some have brought up that it's the same thing I've heard women bring about, like, why I keep hearing about murder mystery podcasts and murder mystery TV shows from from women being into it. You ever hear about that? No? Mm-mm. Like, Tell me more. <laughs> so you know there's a lot of murder mystery podcasts out there and documentaries on Netflix about it I've noticed I don't hear a lot of guys talk about it or bring it up I don't know why but I hear a lot of women talk about it and I don't know why either I don't know why I don't have an answer for any of these I'm just curious as to why I keep seeing that you, but you pointed right that. yeah because now that you mention that yeah I can see that I can see that yeah I don't know do you do you have any thoughts on that maybe a majority of the murders and serial killers are men I'm right. kidding. Actually, you That's know, true. <laughs> out of all of them, through zodiac signs, the I think the most common zodiac sign in a, all like the past murders have been Sagittarius. Oh, nice. I probably should start killing people. I love that for us. I love that for us. <laughs> <laughs> when I see that, I'm like, oh, well, you got a bad rep, huh? <laughs> You're just a little crazy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I have no answers. I, I've seen crazy and weird and creative and fun and so many different people that I like I I find it all fascinating. I find that we have all this all these different ways of trying and to you see things. wouldn't that scare someone else though? You just said what? <laughs> You're like, yeah, I've seen crazy and I find it fascinating. Because it is. It's like yeah. I think crazy is fascinating. I it mean, is very unless fascinating. you're starting to actually hurt somebody, which I don't agree with. But up to that point. Mm-hmm. Which is like every artist that I admire, like yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's wh- that's why I live for the chaos and other people because yeah. I don't need it, but I can live vicariously through you. Like, tell me more. I want to know. I like that. I like mm-hmm. the fun. Like, I like a little chaos sometimes. <laughs> it just keeps things fun. What's the most chaotic thing? What do you mean? That <laughs> that you've done. I 
I've done too much chaotic things. Like, this past month has been chaotic for me. Um, like I said, I'm very impulsive, and I live life on vibes only. How I feel, that's what I'm doing. So, chaotic? That's too broad. I yeah, think I would is. need a, I okay. would need a, you know. I'll be more specific. Okay. <laughs> I'm all nervous. Okay. <laughs> what is something crazy that you've done? Well, I'll be re- really specific. That, um, only hurt you, but you learned tremendously from it, and you'll never do it again. That only hurt me. It could be emotionally, mentally, physically. It could be anything. Um, this is a really good example, um, and this is, like, my current life. So my sleeping has been terrible, like, so, so bad, like, maybe two, three hours a night. And I oh used God. to go from, like, nine to 11 hours to only two or three hours because I've been living in the moment, <laughs> LOL. And, like, you know... <laughs> It's a good example. A really, really good example is the other night. I've been really trying to set boundaries with that. But, like, my friends will stay over till 5, 6 in the morning. And you know I work, like, 7, 8. So sometimes I'm like, no, nah, we're just, you know, I'm living on the vibes. We're having a great time. And it's okay because when I get home from work, I can nap. Never happens. So it's not good for me in it's any not way. Not good. And I'm learning that. But I also just, like, I have this, like, weird obsession with experiences in my life this current time, you know? Like, I just need to take in more and more experience and, and more conversations and more interactions. Why? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have an answer for that. But it's so important to me. So that's crazy enough that I will lose sleep for multiple days in a row just to get a chance to be with people that I care about. Isn't that a little crazy? It's not. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm I, acknowledging. I've been there. I'm acknowledging that it's not healthy for me in it's any not. way. Tell your friends to come over earlier. Why are they stay? They're until six? so rude, and if they see this, which they will, they were over last night. And was it last night? I don't know. You know, I don't know my days that well. <laughs> it was. I don't know. It was one of these days, and I was like, "Hey, you know, I I work really early. I absolutely need you to leave by one." They said, "Okay." You know, they didn't leave till two, right? And that's because I'm like standing at the door, like. Pack up. Like, yeah. I got to get up in four hours. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. But You got to get seven, seven, eight. Nah. Yeah, you No, do. you know what? You're right, though. A good, I would say, like, nine hours is the most perfect amount. Just with, like, my lifestyle right now, nah. You got to do it, Mariah. No, that never. That voice of yours? Yeah, I know, because it's a muscle, and it needs to be resting just like every other part of our body. Your but brain, everything. To think clearly. That, that yeah. memory issue you talked about? Sleep. Really, I feel like this is the best my memory has ever been. I just, <laughs> man, I'm serious, but I don't know. I definitely do need sleep. Everyone I, does. It's it's. There's it's, not enough time in the day. There is. There is. All right. No, I'm gonna. Help no, you I know. Here. Time is a social construct. No, no, no. I wasn't gonna get that gonna, metaphysical. No, no. I just had this conversation. They're like, well, if you wake up earlier, you gain two extra hours in your day. I'm like, but what if I just go to sleep two hours later? Don't I have the same two hours? Well, yeah. No, I wasn't gonna say that. No. Is that true though? Can you tell me your opinion on that? If you wake up two hours earlier, you get two hours more in the day. But if I stay up two hours later at night, is it the same thing? Well, it depends. Are you still waking up? Are you waking up at the same time? No, it's all relative. There's got yeah, 24. The math is simple. 24 hours, right? Pick an eight hour chunk you need to sleep. You pick it. Sounds what if like I take it in naps? I take naps. No, that's sometimes. not good. Don't do that. What? Naps are so good. No, they're not. Says who? Why do they make kids take naps then, huh? But kids need to sleep a lot, first of all, <laughs> and you're not a kid. <laughs> a, a three-year-old does need their naps. They need to sleep like 18 hours a day. Why do they need to sleep so much, Mariah, you ask? Because their brain's developing, and it needs to rest, and their body needs to grow and takes a lot of rest. Your brain is still working heavily for us your life. You know you're fully grown. You're an adult. Your brain still takes on a lot of work. You're doing physical things. You're doing right. mental things. Pick an eight-hour window. You pick. I'm assuming it's going to be 11 to 7 or 10 to 6. Did I sleep? Yeah. You said 10 to 6. 10 That's to ridiculous. No, 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 no. Don't look at ridiculous. I'm never no. going to be sleeping at Don't 10 p.m. Don't look at ridiculous. Just pick an 8-hour window of 24 hours. You decide. I don't know math. I don't like it. No, just- <laughs> so- okay, how this? You wake um, up at 6, right? Okay, yeah. So 10 to 6. That's 8 hours. I'm not going to go to sleep at 10 o'clock. Am I my grandma? Like, I can't. I you, can't. You are can't. a grandma. Oh, I can't. I, Grandmas I, I are essentially, wise. I essentially am. I love oatmeal. It's my favorite meal. Grandmas are my wise. My favorite cereal How old is your raisin bran. That you just refer to. She's 69. Okay. She's older. She's made it. So, we're the, like words of wisdom. 
she goes to sleep at like 6 p.m. <laughs> okay, you don't gotta do that. She does. Seriously. I get it. You're not at a good age to be going to bed at 10. I get it. But no, I think my life is just, you know, not very um, structured and organized in the current moment. I don't blame you. I didn't get the strict too much older. I get it. And when I was 24, I was, in, I was ridiculous with my sleep and stuff. But even if it's seven hours, even if it's 11 to six, like you pick that and you get that routine. 11 to six. Okay. That is more doable, but like, I'm very assuming that your friends kind of work later. Is that why they come over yeah. later? Yeah. I work a day job and they work. Well, That's, most of them are also freelance artists. Oh, so, so they, they do just chaos. They live yeah. how they feel. I'm telling and, you, vibes only. But you can only do that for so long before you start breaking down. Yeah, that's why I tried to set a boundary. It did. It didn't. I mean, I, I did set the boundary, but it definitely was difficult. Where I'm like, all right, everyone, pack up. Like, try this for on. two weeks. Mm. Uh, Eleven to six. Two weeks. Just try it, and then talk, and then we'll talk <laughs> this again. Never gonna happen. Why? <laughs> Because of people that I hang out with. Just tell like, them. Like, no. They'll text me at like 9 o'clock. Hey, can I come over? Just yeah. say no. Just say no. Two weeks. But but I, like I'm trying I something for two weeks. I love out. <laughs> I know, but you don't... You know how you don't hang out? What? You die. <laughs> <laughs> you look oh. so defeated. You like look dumb. What? What? No, you're right. I, I definitely... There's you can't so hang many, out if your brain's just melted. There's so many things that I'd like to work on, like short-term goals for my, you know, my life right now, which is like finding better sleep, finding... It, I'm the one that finds it. But it's like <laughs> getting better sleep or um, getting like on a schedule so that I can consume the right amount of calories that my body needs. Um, maybe... Like... Like... The right, the right kind of calories. No, the right amount. What do you mean the right because amount? Because I forget. Remember I told you I forget to eat. So there's times where um, I think a, a big part of it is my medication because it suppresses hunger. Oh, okay. Um, that I forget. I won't get hungry all day and I'll forget. My friends are like, what did you eat today? I'm like, a granola bar. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's something that I want to be better at and, and work. I, that's something I have to literally sit down and force myself to do. So, yeah. you know, there's... Want, a, want some... Guidance, please. Some, always. I'm some, always open to that. Some thoughts and advice. I have the opposite problem of that. Okay. <laughs> As always, we discovered. Right. We're like right here and then just completely opposite. That's okay. <laughs> Which is great. Um, I enjoy it, but I can eat a lot. All I do is think about food. I, <laughs> I have the obesity gene for sure. I mean, I, I, I was once 40 pounds heavier, so I understand and how serious I can get. But what I'm getting at is... To help with that, I fast. I, I give myself eight hours and I eat within that window. And I have people in my life that have an issue. Not, I wouldn't say issue. That's not the right word. I take that back. Uh, a situation with their body like how yours is where they kind of forget. It could be anxiety driven. It could be medication driven. It doesn't really matter. They kind of forget. They don't think about it. So what they have done is the same thing. Fast, which sounds counterintuitive, but it gives yourself an right. eight-hour window. So it forces you to eat in that eight-hour window. And you actually end up getting all the calories you need because you you force yourself between you pick it your job you could be between nine and five ten and six whatever it is it can be a nine hour window it forces you to have to eat because you're not going to eat in the other windows and it forces your body to be a little more healthy with digesting stuff because fasting is really good for a long time we didn't just have food available all the time. you couldn't just go to a pantry and pick out food right they didn't exist things went bad in, in fact that's a whole other story we shouldn't eat stuff that doesn't go bad um which is all another story. love the preservatives. I'm kidding. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Maybe not. I'm <laughs> kidding. I don't know. It depends. There's certain things where I'm like, uh, I'm okay with that. Like what? Mm, I love Cheez Its. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm sure you can keep Cheez Its for like years and yeah. it still tastes the same. I yeah, I've I've gotten a little annoying with my food consumption where it's like if there's more three ingredients, don't eat it. If there's a preservative, don't touch it. That's how I feel about my hair. I refuse to put anything. Your hair looks great. I thank you. It's it's curly, you know. It's curly. It's very curly. But I refuse. People are like, "Hey, try out my hair product," and I'm like, "Absolutely not." I see all these chemicals in there. I'm good. Wait, I don't need so it. why do you apply it to your hair and not your body? Mm, your you body's way more important. It, the, in fact, it, it is like the foundation that, of your hair. I know. My my grandma like she'll call me in the morning. She's like, "You better eat. Your hair's gonna fall out." I'm like, "Stop telling me that." <laughs> and another thing that. Uh, <laughs> I'm still young, but another thing a lot of youngsters, like your age, forget or don't realize is, of course you look good. You're 24. 
Oh, I know. You know, this whole conversation we're having, I've had them like grandma like seven times. Grandma's, I told you, listen. Like your nails are going to get brittle and your teeth are going to fall out. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, when I talk to people in their 20s, like, yeah, I do this. I eat like that. I sleep with this. It's fine. I'm, I feel great. It's like, of yeah. course you do. You're in your 20s. And I know, Keep it up. Talk to me when I you're 40. Have, you know, I'm lucky enough to say that I haven't lived my life like this very long. Good. You know? No like, more Cheez-Its. <laughs> no, you know, Cheez-Its, the duo ones are very good. But the way that, like, my lifestyle has been my entire life is, you know, I, I eat very healthy. My favorite foods are fruits and vegetables. Um, I've always been athletic, so I like to exercise. My sleep was always really important to me. I needed nine hours. Otherwise, you can't talk to me if it's, like, less than eight. Like, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. But, like, now... This is very, I would say within the past maybe six, five to six months, my life has just been kind of hard to to <laughs> juggle. And I'm not going to lie, I kind of like it. I kind of like the like chaos. It? It, it's different Why? for me. It's different, you know. It's That's a, what makes you happy? It's a little bit of spice in my life. <sighs> and I, although I'm recognizing that it may not be the best for me, I'm definitely appreciate, appreciating the moment and the things I'm learning through this because it's it's new, you mm-hmm. know. And yeah. you don't know what doesn't work for you unless you don't try it out. I know it doesn't work. Mentally, I know it doesn't work. But it feels so good to be on the other spectrum of the life that I've always lived. Mm-hmm. I don't I'm like Hannah Montana right now. <laughs> I'm in my try Hannah it. Montana era. Try it. You're young enough to try <laughs> it and mess around and be goofy and get the bad sleep. I mean, I'm being an old four now. I'm being an old wise man. I have, I'm so bad sometimes <laughs> because I'm just like that's so bad I mean it, it, this is good advice but it's like it's context like you're doing your thing you're living life you enjoy your job you are you seem very thrilled and happy and you have like this glow which is good yeah have fun stay up till 3 or 4 because in a couple of years you're not going to do it anymore yeah I know you're going to hate it and you're going to be just like me an old fool who's like no everyone out by 9 I'm going to bed at 10 like, I mean, yeah, I, I, you know, I respect that though. Well, it, it comes from a place because I already did what you're saying. Like right. I did it, everything you're saying more than a lot more than people ever could understand. Like I'll, I'll, I'll simplify it for 17 years. I've had a DIY space. I've had 17 roommates. I've met every person under the sun. I've had massive music festivals with thousands of people here shows every month. The craziest amount of people, people just show up here all the time still. I, you know, half people I've met or even close to it, the 6 a.m.s every night, like staying up to the sunrise right. every night, all of it. I've done it all. So now that I did it all, I'm like, I, that's, you can't sustain that. You'll burn out. Oh, Everyone yeah. I know that is a great artist or a great musician or a great whatever, a great thinker, eventually they burnt themselves out if they kept down that path. So yeah, yeah have fun, mm-hmm. do it. And then a couple of years from now, you're like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. That's you know, ridiculous. I used to work so much that I would burn myself out. I would have, like, I wouldn't hang out with people and I wouldn't, like, I was really strict and disciplined with my life because I think just the situation that, you know, like, that my life permitted for me, I just felt like I, well, also I'm really impulsive with my money, so I like to make more money. So I've always had, like, three jobs, you know? But this is the first time in my life that although I am living in the chaos, it feels so calming. Mm. It is the most craziest thing because I've always lived by structure and, you know, Mm -hmm. just being a workaholic, you'll never, making plans with me is hard. I'm not going to be able to commit to that unless, you know, like I said, like my money's important to me and that's what's going to come first, unfortunately. But now at this part of my life, I'm realizing that it's possible to, well, because I have a good job and I like my job and I can pick my own hours and that, you know, that sense, but I'm able to kind of experience both. Yeah. And that, I think that's why right now it seems fun. Sure, I'm, I know it's not the best, and I eventually we'll get tired of this, but it's so new. Yeah, it's no, so do fresh. it. Do it. Sleep nah, three but hours. Honestly, I need that smoothie recipe. I will. I that's, will <laughs> that's something I'll do. It's really good, and have it. I mean, it's hard. Everyone's schedule is different. I, I make most of my own schedule, and it's very unique to me, and I'm fortunate for it. Um, but I take advantage of it too. I don't, don't take it for granted at all. Um, but I like it after like a couple hours in the fast and it is huge. It's heavy. It's a lot. It's 32 ounces and it's, it's thick, but every part of it is strategically put in there for a certain type of enhancement right. to the body. And it's jet fuel. It, it gets me through a lot of intense things from physical to mental and emotional workout every day. 
I try to work those three things out every day, no matter what. So I, I sleep like a rock now. When like when it's ten, ten thirty comes around, I take my shower and I go put my head in the pillow, and it takes all but fifteen minutes. And I'm out. I used to not be able to do that. I used to stay up till four, five, six because spinning just I couldn't yeah. stop it. And now That's I just hard. exert everything out of me. I like work so much and I schedule everything so strategic. So I'm just melted, just done. <laughs> By 10, I'm just like, I don't even want to talk to someone. I don't want to look at anything. I just want to go to bed. And it works well. But if I do anything, if I drink, if I smoke, if I eat too late, if I eat past the fasting, if I have pizza, all of it gets messed up. It's weird. It's like this perfect machine Mm -hmm. until you put the wrong oil in there and the lubrication just goes haywire. Maybe that's what's happening. You're right. Maybe that. With you? Mm Mm-hmm. I feel like. That's why I say yeah. just try it for two weeks. Maybe. I definitely will consider that. And you know, that's fine. If, you, if you're like, eh, I miss my friends, then do it again. Or tell someone, like, mm-hmm. the people who can hang out a little bit earlier. That's what I'm saying. Like, maybe, like, setting those personal boundaries for yeah. myself. Just say well, it as, like, a fun joke. Like, today, guys, I'm trying something new for two weeks. <clears throat> I did. Someone earlier was like, hey, are you sure? Okay, it was really, really funny. But they're like, are you sure you don't want a hit of this bowl? And I was like, no, nah, I'm not smoking no more. Like, no more. They're like, you know, it was my house. Like, you have three bowls on this coffee table all packed. I'm like, they're not mine. I swear they're not mine, and I'm not doing it. Like, I'm not going to do it. And then they said, thank you for setting that boundary. I was like, yeah, I did that. I nice. set that boundary. So you had three packed bowls just sitting at your house? Yeah, you know, my, my house is a hangout spot. and I know how you feel. <laughs> so they just me. come over, and everyone's like, oh, yeah, dude, I left my weed there. It's fine. No one's going to touch it. You can come back. It'll still be yeah. there. So you don't smoke weed anymore? <sighs> um, I don't ever go out of my way to purchase weed ever i will go out of my way to purchase edibles that was a very lawyer explanation for smoking weed yeah i don't i won't ever go out of my way because i, I didn't can't. ask if you purchased weed i said no, do you no. smoke weed <laughs> i mean sometimes you know if someone's gonna just be like hey would you like to smoke with me i'd be like ah depends on the circumstance but like I will never go out of my way to purchase weed to physically smoke. Now, I do purchase edibles. I always have edibles on me. That's great. <clears throat> That's great as far as the throat thing. Yeah, exactly. That's the only way that I can, you know, get high and get not a hurt little your bit throat. of exactly. Sure. Also, I feel like it'll help me like with my sleep, which is why I would take them at night. I I feel like I get the best sleep and I want to hear something that'll make you upset. Oh, no. What does it keep you awake? Tell me. <laughs> it doesn't keep you awake. But you're not fully going into sleep. I know. Like that REM sleep. Read this book by this Dr. Matthew Walker. It's called Why We Sleep. Okay, that's It'll interesting. It'll both help you and make you hate your life. Because you'll go, well, I guess there goes smoking and drinking and eating and everything. All the fun. All Jeez. of it is not. Well, let's. if you believe in human evolution, if you believe that we've been at this and trying to figure out and turning into who we are now over millions of years. I'm not saying you have to, but if you do believe that, only in the last couple hundred years, more specifically like 50 years, have we been having all the stuff we have. Our bodies are not designed yeah. for it at all. No, in fact, that's right. why there's so many issues with heart disease, diabetes, mental illness, body Im- image issues, so many issues because this is all so new. Even what we're doing right now, this is new. No time in history to have a 4K camera, high-end podcast microphones, recording on a computer – with high-end headphones in a space. That's literally how I feel right now. Like, I don't understand how this is even possible. If you ask me... In to, general? Yep. If you <laughs> ask me to set this up, I'm like, huh? I how did you, you get them all hard. connected? That's my main thing. What well, even is Think that? about it. There's a nice phrase to know. It's called signal flow. Okay. Okay. So signal flow is what that is. From point A to point Z, how does it happen? So, like, right now, the first source, point A, is you, Mariah, your voice, right? So it's... You're pushing it out, and it's going into this microphone, right? Microphone is picking it up. The The diaphragm of it is analogous to the sound hitting it. So any air pressure that's going positive, negative, these ebbs and flows are pushing the diaphragm that do it. Around that diaphragm is metal. Well, it's copper. It's copper around it over a magnet. That copper moving creates an electromagnetic field, which creates a voltage that is analogous to the diaphragm that's moving, which is analogous to the air hitting it from your voice that voltage moves it goes down this xlr cable which k- takes the signal reverses as three pins one of the pins reverse the polarity which means it flips the signal canceling out all the electromagnetic fields that would go into this which is essentially a long antenna it's all antennas are they're just not flipped the polarity 
the signal goes out of phase down it, which means the signal's flipped. So it cancels it itself out deliberately to not pick up other electromagnetic fields, radio waves and such. It gets to a preamp, flips back to a usable signal that's the fl polarities flip back. That signal now gets brought up to line level because it's such a weak millivolt. It's very low. The signal is not powerful at all. The preamp brings it to a usable level through different gain structures. Then that goes to an analog to digital converter, analog because it's voltage, to a digital converter, which now is in the interface, sends that digital zero and one bit through the Thunderbolt into logic. Logic takes it, prints it, saves it, analyzes it. You see it happening right now. Takes that and everything, I just, that's the end point. Everything I just said to you now, it does the opposite, sending it back to these headphones. Because all these headphones are, are the opposite of the microphone. It's a diaphragm that's being moved with copper from a magnet, sending the signal into your head or into your ear. Your ear is the opposite of your mouth. So the headphone, if you were to take it and plug it into an XLR cable, you could talk into it like a microphone. And if you took these microphones and plugged it into the output, it's a speaker. Diaphragm microphones work the same way. So that signal flow, understanding that can help you understand how to make everything work in a live concert, in a recording studio, just how do I get from here to here and every step in the way. Once you know it, you're good. What's so interesting is that I spend a majority of my time at a microphone and or wearing headphones, and I'm like, how does this work? And you explaining that to me, first of all, no one has ever done before, ever, <laughs> ever in my life. And... um I don't know. It's it's a lot to take in. I don't even know if I fully registered that. That's okay. But it, <laughs> that's like that's an audio theory, audio production class that I teach. That's really in cool. In fact, if you're interested, we'll talk about off mic, but June 4th, I'm teaching a free class here. It's all Ju females. June 4th, I have an event to go to. Never mind. You know what? The oh, time I forgot is, you wouldn't have came anyway because you, you don't do the yeah, planning thing. I don't do that. But I do have an event that I committed to already. And you know what? Unfortunately, the time doesn't align in this current moment, but that doesn't mean that we can't do that in the future. Yes, I'm happy to go over this sometime in the future. Um, I enjoy doing it. I do it for a living. I also do it for a living in many. <laughs> That'd be really cool, though. You know, I I've been reaching out to a lot of people in regards to like audio engineering, yeah. just to get like a better sense because I love live sessions, but I can't figure out how to do it. So that's you know it's, that's of important. course. And the more you do it, it's not that complicated. I'm not asking you to be um, an acoustician or an electrical engineer who can design these microphones, I can't even do it. I know all the components that are in it. I even have a rough idea of what they're doing. Capacitor with capacitance, transformer, transistors, resistance, all this information, even the four key terms of electricity, wattage, ohms, amperage, and voltage. But I'm not an electrical engineer. So I'm an audio engineer. So I, I can do everything else. I can take these tools that uh, what you would consider engineers and scientists have designed and made and apply it to the art world. It's uh, like a, a perfect median for art to technology, you know. Mm -hmm. So that's why I like it so much. It's the best of both worlds. It's everything I like in both. You need both to exist, you know, in 2022 in America. It's really cool. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that with me. You're welcome. I'm a nerd and I love it. That is completely <laughs> fine. That is completely fine. It's just, it's kind of a phenomenon. Like, Everything I just said, at the very core of it, we, as a species, we to yet know how it works. We don't, we know how to make an electromagnetic field. We don't know actually why it does what it does, which is insane. You know, that's the same thing for love. They don't exactly know. No. Like there's no, no. Exact, we know, you know there's all these things going on and we have attachments. There's books about attachments. There's book about emotions. There's books about all these things, but there's research that people have. PhDs in this, and yet we still don't actually know the secret to the sauce. Yeah, exactly. And okay, cool. Yeah. That's why I love electromagnetic fields. Oh, wow. I see what you did there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's uh, cool. What is wrong with me? It's okay. <laughs> I appreciate it. I love how you don't go, nothing's wrong with you. You just go, it's okay. Something's wrong with you. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know what? You probably know me a lot better than a lot more people now. After I just explained to you that sometimes, you know, the things I say sound a little crazy. <laughs> and that's okay. That's okay. You know what's funny? What? I wanted to talk to you because you sing about music and we've like, no, we like 1%. Touched, yeah, I haven't even touched the music. <laughs> but that's also my fault. You know, I told you I love to talk. Yeah. That's what happens when I sit down for these things. It's okay. We, I've talked about music with a million people. It's like th what we've talked about. The, guess how long we've been talking for? 
I don't even want to look. Just guess. I can't. You don't have to look. Just guess. I don't want to guess. Just guess. <laughs> <laughs> I've never had such a hard... Just guess. <laughs> um, I don't know. Can you tell me the time, actually? It's 8.43. <laughs> About like two hours and eight yeah. minutes. Okay. It's crazy, right? Not really, no. <laughs> You're the first person to say that. Everyone's no. like, wow, that was fast. No, I just, I love talking. I don't, Me too. You know? Do you have a, a time window? I mean, you do stay up till three. I do actually, but I forgot what time I agree to. But I do have somewhere to be after this. <laughs> <We're> what? <laughs> um, I don't remember what I said. We can end it. You probably probably need to end yeah, it because apparently you have to. to be somewhere. I do have to be somewhere. You really do. I'm busy. I like to do things. I get it. I I, I love the experience. I, I respect it. Um, well, <laughs> on that note, <laughs> um, it was really nice to meet you and talk to you. And I learned a lot. And you're a really wise person, really great person. Thank you. Thank you for having me here in this beautiful space. I, very, I felt very comfortable. Um, even just the conversation with you, also very stimulating, which is, you know, something that's really great to have. So thank you so much. Thank you. And... I'm looking forward to having you at DZ Fest. Oh, yeah. That's going to be really cool. Which is going to be crazy. The 10th one. The last one here. It's going to be really cool. It's going to be wild. I got a full band, so I'm really excited. Great. It's going to be great. You're going to be in the documentary when we have a whole documentary. Oh, night. that's also exciting, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, what is that? June? July? July 9th and 10th. Cool. I have some new music <laughs> You're like, out. wait, I think I yeah. have to do something that I'm day. like, do I have? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have some music coming out at that time, so that's wonderful. Really great promotion. Yeah. Is there anything you want to promote while you're here? Any pages, links, anything? Um, yeah, while we're here, I have a <laughs> sing. I don't know when this is going to be out, but I have a single next week. Oh, perfect! I have a single coming out um, May 26th. I was saying the 29th for so long until people were correcting me, but it's the 26th, and yeah, it is a love song, which is so new. Me? Are you oh kidding God. me? Love Crazy. Song? That's never happened. Exactly. <laughs> so it's the first time I'm making a love song. And oh, nice. It's important. Very cool. Anything else? Nah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> that's everything. Well, Mariah, you're a great person. Wonderful soul. It Thank was very you. very nice to meet you. Yeah, same here. Thanks for having me. You're very welcome. <laughs> All right. <laughs>